and close it. <laughs> so. Hello, hello. Hi, guys. So today we are doing question and answer because a lot of people have been asking us questions lately. So we thought this would be a good time to go ahead and answer some answer of those questions. questions. Mm -hmm. Did do you want to go first, Mother? Oh, me? Okay. Off the top of your <laughs> off head? The top oh, of, your... I left my list at home, so I'm doing this off the top of my head. Uh, a couple of things. These are just little things. Uh, one, I think it was Karen asked me what shade of polish I had on last week. These are just the little questions we're getting out of the way first. And um, it's Wet n Wild, Wild Shine, and Lavender. And I got mine at the Dollar Tree. I they don't have it there anymore, but you maybe I think you can get it at Walmart or Walgreens. And I may have it's it's lavender, but I may have added some color to it. So you can try and see see what you think, Karen. So and then the other thing is uh, we've had a couple of people asking about our makeup and our skincare. What do we do? And Mike, did you get those links to put them in? Yeah. And so Michael stick the links in because we've got a couple of YouTube channel or videos that we did on on that thing. And also, if you guys have some questions we don't answer, um, we get a lot on tithing and different things. Go into our YouTube channel, Living on a Dime, and where the little magnifying glass is, just type in that that search bar thing. Put in like tithe or whatever your main words are on anything that you have a question on sometimes. And we've already done a lot of videos on a lot of these things. So you can find them that way by just putting main, you know, um, important words into those little squares. Keywords. Keywords. That's what I was trying to think of. Um, another thing. Oh, I was going to tell, say, uh, see, I go afterwards after we have this. I can't read any of the questions. So I go home and read all your comments and questions. And these are kind of from last week. But uh, I think it was Trinity. I was so excited. I don't think Michael knows this. Trinity said she'd been watching and watching our videos for ages. And she was so excited and learned so much from them. She decided to go to school and get a degree, a, an accounting certificate Nice. in finances after watching our videos. I thought that was so cool. That's the first time we've ever had anything like that. So I just thought that was kind of neat. We love it when you guys tell us stories like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, what was, do you remember what some of the other questions was that I asked about? We had somebody ask, what do we do about saving for our children's future? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, I know I laughed too, but um, we don't. It's their <laughs> business, not ours. Yeah, we don't. We don't say for the kids' future. I know that sounds hard-hearted and cruel, but what we do is we start the kids out when they're 15 or 16, getting a job part time. You know, they can do a job. They can use get used to doing a job while they're going to Actually, school. Actually, we start them when they're like eight. <laughs> yeah, really. No, we really. Yeah, do. we do. We did. You guys were working around the, the house. Business. Our kids since they're because since they were probably five or six have always packed books for us. Yeah, you guys worked in the drill presses and stuff yeah. for me. So we start them off early. That helps them get used to being responsible, mm -hmm. earning money, showing up on time for things, you know, and that type of thing. So that mm -hmm. by the time they graduate and they're like 18, they should be able to easily move into the next step of their life and start working and going to school if they want and work part time and things be an adult. It's time for them to be an adult. Now, if you want to help them a little bit, you can just say if you if you're capable but don't, you're not, you shouldn't be working at this. They should be responsible for themselves as an adult, really. So yeah. my daughter Ellie is on here. Oh, hi, Ellie. Oh, Ellie, I see you. Are you a responsible <laughs> adult now? <laughs> she is. She is. I'm really proud of Ellie because she told me when I visited her, she said, you know, Nan, I feel pretty comfortable. She's, she's financially, working. she's working. She's financially stable and everything. And so that's, that's how you do it. And uh, I don't know why you would have to feel responsible about your, you know, adult children like yeah, that. We don't pay for college. They pay for their own schooling if they want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, Elise says she's not sure if responsible is the right word. Yes, you are. <laughs> well, I'm not paying I'm your, your bills. Nan. I'm so your nan. <laughs> I'm not paying your bills, so I don't know who's paying She it. is. She's me. really good about them. Um, but... Uh, yeah. So, okay. Mike's pulling your questions and he's going to send them to me, but we're going to read some of the questions. I did a, um, 
community tab survey yesterday asking what people wanted to know. So while you guys are putting your questions in, we're going to go through a couple of these or all 45 of them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got 45 so far. Um, all right. What holiday is my tree celebrating this month? Gardening? Because I'm a big garden. What's gardening? Because I love gardening. So. Laura, would love to hear money-saving tips pertaining to kids. Also, any stories how y'all managed when you had just little kids? For example, how you kept them busy and with frugal activities and toys. Thanks. I didn't. We gave them a box. <laughs> we gave them a box and said, here you go. I yeah. mean, really, I think parents worry way too much about entertaining their kids. They really mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. um, kids don't need to go to roller skating, the trampoline park, the outdoor park, the zoo, all that stuff. Those should if, be treats once in a while, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, if, then they lose their effectiveness. Yeah. If the zoo had free day or ice skating was free or something like that, then we would take them. But at home, I just let them play with their toys and I didn't worry about it. Yeah. And as a grandma, when they'd come over, like when they were babies laying on the floor, you know, they had those fancy ring things that you hang, slide the baby under and they lay and look at all those little things that dangle down. I just took a broom and put it between two chairs. I think I tied on all kinds of crazy things like a measuring spoons they would bat at, you know, and little things like that. I just tied along the broom and they would lay under their colorful things and, and watch them. So kids don't really need a whole lot. And like Mike said, they love the boxes. Their first Christmas or two, they played with the boxes, the empty boxes and that type. The boys would take their, the, the, uh, paper, wrapping paper rolls. Mm -hmm. They love playing swords. Oh, and then uh, I had some stick things over at my house that weren't even toys. And just recently they came over and placed, mm -hmm. you know, so you they just don't need much. And I even like recently with the older kids, I don't have any fancy games on my computer or anything like that. And they came over and I had my Chinese checkerboard sitting on a table. They have had more fun playing Chinese checkers on that silly board, you know, yeah. so it doesn't take a whole lot. Yeah. Somebody says, sad, you're not saving dollars for your children. It's so easy to do a few dollars a month into an account for 18 years. No. Why should my retirement pay for my kids when they're adults? That's absolutely ridiculous. Give it to them, There's no the reason. World. And what's <clears throat> even more maddening is when parents are paying for their kids' college and their parents are not 100% debt free, including their house and their retirement is 100% funded. If you are 100% debt free, including your house and your retirement is 100% uh, funded, then you can go ahead and pay for whatever you want to pay for your kids. I think it's stupid to do that, but if you want to do that, you can. But kid, the problem with kids today is they're not responsible for anything. No, they don't. And that's to. why we're in the mess we are now because all these kids aren't responsible for anything. Yeah. And they don't work. Now, I know everyone's going to pop up there and say, well, my kids, I paid for everything and they did worked hard. And there are exceptions yeah. to the rule. But a majority of the kids, they're going to take what they can get and just kind of goof off a lot of times. So, it's, yeah, that really ticks me off. When yeah. Parents are paying for kids as college and the kids are goofing off. Yeah. And the kids are oblivious. I mean, the parents yeah. are oblivious to it. Yeah. And, and if you're a parent paying, your kids should have at least. A's and B's, if not mostly A's, if you're paying for college. And you know what? It makes them a stronger person. Yeah. I think part of the reason we're having so many people that can't figure things mm -hmm. out, that don't know what to do, they haven't, they've just had it so easy. They don't know how to actually take care of themselves. Yeah. And somebody says, how do you get your kids, um, how do you get your kids to clean their rooms? She fights it every day. They don't get to do the fun stuff until their room's cleaned. Well, and my kids too, in the morning yeah. before school, mm -hmm. they didn't have, I didn't starve them by any means, but I didn't, we didn't have breakfast until they got their beds made, got dressed for school. And um, then I'd say, come on, breakfast is ready. And they'd come in and they, it's amazing what they'll do if you're holding breakfast for them and they can't eat until they get, and it wasn't yeah. like I said, you're not going to get any food today or that type of thing. It was just like, Breakfast came after. But these things were expected from when I was a child. Um, you know, it wasn't an option for me not to clean my room. Yeah, I wasn't a it wasn't drill a, sergeant no, or anything. It but just, parents don't expect their kids to do anything. So then when the parents realize, oh, well, I'm fighting this every day. Well, why are you fighting it every day? It's because you haven't set up those expectations and held your ground 
when you say you're going to be grounded and you're not going to see your friends if you don't clean up your room or you're not going to have computer time, now it's computer time, iPad, whatever, and the parents give their kids iPads, phones, all this stuff, if they're not going to clean up their room, all that stuff is gone. Mm -hmm. And parents don't don't hold the boundaries and say, this is what's going to happen. And if you don't like it. And once again, you're doing them an injustice by not doing this because when they get to be adults and they show up to work mm -hmm. 20 minutes, 30 late minutes late, and the boss says, you're supposed to be here at this time. Well, I didn't, you know, mm -hmm. they don't know that they have to be responsible yeah. for things. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, no, no, go ahead and you can send it to me, but I'm going to get through a few of these first. Tina says, I had hoped to buy a small house, but with the market going crazy, I'm priced out. I have a down payment saved for a house. Any ideas what I should do with the money I saved? Is it okay to just sit, have it sit in a savings account? So yeah, I mean, if you're planning on getting a house, you're not going to earn that much interest in the next six months or a year if you put it in something else. So that's totally up to you. But I would say now that they've raised interest rates, housing prices will probably even out um, in the next six months to a year. So something like really, it doesn't really yeah, matter. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'd like to hear your thoughts about building a like-minded community, especially preppers. How easy was it for you to integrate into your community? People are usually reluctant to like to get close to strangers. So you just have to talk to people. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say that we have really any close friends or anything here, yeah, yeah. but we have acquaintances. <clears throat> and neighbors that we've just talked to and like I just found out yesterday that uh one of my neighbors she's kind of a prepper and um so we were talking a little bit about that and so you just just talk to people mm -hmm. I mean that's pretty much all you do is just keep talking just like to the cable guy came or tv guy came today and he, I was talking to him I said I'm from Kansas you know just started up a conversation that's you just kind of start a conversation and ask them things about them, you know, that type mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. Um, Carolyn, what do you guys pack in cars for road trips when you were moving? Ooh. Do you have any road snack tips? Do you have any suitcase packing tips? How were you dealing with chronic fatigue on the road? So dealing with chronic fatigue on the road is just the same as dealing with it every, you know, the rest of the time. You just do what you do and you just keep going until I mean, you just have to keep going. There's really nothing, especially you, with yeah, but do be do expect to be a little bit more tired because yeah. you maybe won't be sleeping as well mm -hmm. and that type of thing. As far as the food, I love I love this part of the question because I, I've always taken food on the road and keep it simple. And but what I would do is take fun stuff. We wouldn't ever stop and eat, you know, at fast foods or go into restaurants. Mm -hmm. I would just take food in the car and I would take special stuff that we normally wouldn't have. It was like on vacation because that was part of the vacation treat. Mm -hmm. And so I would take like that. My kids would never have gotten the little sippy juice thing. Mm -hmm. So that would be a treat or cans of pop. We would take uh, potato chips like Pringles. We used when normal. That wouldn't be normal. Hard boiled eggs. Sometimes yeah. We take nuts. hard boiled eggs. And I remember when I was growing up, my mom would stop at a little grocery store in any town we were going through and she'd get a fresh loaf of bread and a package of bologna and to me to this day I that was the best sandwich I think I ever had and a bag of potato chips and a Pepsi and we were good to go mm -hmm. and so don't don't make it too complicated especially for you keep it yeah. simple finger foods a thermos I when we go to Billings I take a thermos of tea and, um, and or water or whatever and then my another thing my mom did a lot was she'd take a thermos jug and she'd put hot dogs in it and pour boiling water in it and then take a package of hot dog buns and by the time we stopped at noon the hot dogs would be all cooked and ready hot ready to eat so you know there's just lots of simple little things you can do keep it easy for you though next do you like the back to eden method of gardening that's the only kind i've been i've been doing that since before it was even called back to eden gardening i've been doing that for 35 years it wasn't even a thing then so yes i absolutely love it as a matter of fact i have a video coming up on friday of putting in my raised beds and it's actually the same method I'm um, sorry. <laughs> I never, I never have heard of that before. And I just envision you, Michael, out there in your skin, your <laughs> skins, <laughs> your lat sheep skins. Or Michael something. would prefer we were naked. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, are we going to 
going to ever do any more Bible videos. I mean, we're kind of working them in a little bit with just our regular videos, yeah. but we don't have a Bible channel or anything. But yes, we're working into those. Um, looking for more info to prepare for the com for the coming next Great Depression. Um, so really, there's nothing you can do to prepare. <laughs> yeah. If there's a Great Depression coming, you have to, okay, go study the Depression. And you probably have, you know, just from your name, I'm sure you have. But the thing is, what people don't understand is when the banks are gone, <laughs> it's every man for himself. And so all the money in the world, you're not going to be able to prepare with all the money in the world for something like that. Because even the wealthy lost everything. Yeah. Now, you can have a stockpile of food for one year, two years, three years if you want. but there comes a point where you're not going to be able to stock up that much. And so I would do practical things like make sure you have a stockpile of food, make sure your cars are in good working order, make sure you have things that you might need like wagons, shovels, rakes, those kinds of things to take care of your house. Do you have WD-40? Do you have duct tape? Do you have bailing wire? Do you have other kinds of wire? Do you know how to cook? Well, I was going to say, I think the most important thing is to get skills, get as mm -hmm. many skills in as many different areas as what you can learn as many things, you know, go on YouTube and study things. Now, if you have the money to go to a small college, you know, and get mm -hmm. learn welding or, you know, any type of thing, get sewing skills, anything you can like that in skills, carpentry skills and things. So yeah, everything. Yeah. Uh, Jan wants to know, I've seen people get those five gallon buckets out with flour in it. Do I think this is a good idea? No, I just did a video on this like two or three videos ago and it's got pictures of flour with a circle and a check mark. Go watch that video. It explains it a lot for you. Um, Anna, what are your thoughts on installing sol solar panels on your roof to save money on energy? It is a huge waste of money. Do not do it. Even... We personally know a guy who installs them here, and he has said they are a waste of money. It's the his people, business. That's his it's business. his business. That's his business. And he told me they are a waste of money. Don't do it. You will never recuperate your costs with your electric bill ever. You're there's, not. It's not going to happen. There's so many other ways to save on your electric bill. Mm -hmm. For me personally, anyway, yeah. that I wouldn't be saving that much. Don't waste your money. Now, I do have a small solar panel myself, that being said, but not for all my roof. I have it for my sump pump I did mm -hmm. in case the power went out, then I would have something. Yeah. And it's it fine going. to have like a solar generator or a little yeah. bit like mom did, but to have your whole entire house, no, you will it's, never, ever recoup no. the cost. You, you, you can save in other ways. Yeah. Uh, how about electric car or hybrid autos? They aren't really worth the money either. My son has one and it's okay, but guys, the batteries alone are $2,500. And if you think you're going to save the environment by driving one, you're not. The cost to manufacture those with fossil fuels completely outweighs anything that you would save driving it. So no, I, I wouldn't use those if, if I was buying a new car. Um, let's see, how do you, this is from Sam, how do you and Bo, Tara handle your CFS and Tara's fibromyalgia? Are you taking medication, vitamins, eating and avoiding certain foods? So if you go to our, just go to, um, either a playlist, we have a chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia playlist, or you can type in chronic fatigue syndrome on the search on our YouTube channel. We have a whole bunch of videos on that and it answers all those questions. Have you ever considered going off grid after retirement? What steps would you do if this was the plan? So I have always wanted to live off grid. <laughs> like, I mean, when I was like 15, I was making Before plans that to was live the off thing grid. Or, yeah, Before it was even called, called off, off grid. grid. Yeah. Back then it was called crazy. Yeah. <laughs> now it's called off grid and you're something special. But, <laughs> but I would love to, but Mike... There's no way Mike would ever do that. <laughs> so if no. Mike dies, I might go live off grid and have a happy life. But because <laughs> <laughs> Mike's gone. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I would love to do. It. As a matter of fact, we just talked last week. I'm like, okay, maybe we should just sell everything and just go get 
a small house and live off grid. And I, I've always wanted to be, so, live up in the mountains, just yeah. in a small cabin by myself up in the mountains. So. Uh, what steps would you do if you wanted to do this? Well, what would I do? You'd need to get off, pay off all your debt first. Get rid of Mike. <laughs> then I'd have to get, get rid, rid of Mike. Uh, <laughs> just joking, said along. And you just have to, you know, start getting your land. Do you want land with a house? Do you want land? You know, you're going to have to take into account. You're going to need well. You're going to need sewer or septic. You're going to need not it, electric, but you're going to need to be able to have water and sewer. Expect it to be a little bit more work than you anticipated, probably. Oh, it's going to be a thousand times yeah. more work than it's you gonna think it will be. Yeah. It's going to just be, uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. She can live off grid if we retire, and I'll come out of the house occasionally and go visit her. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, so we have an off-grid putting... place out there in the tree. We have a tree house. <laughs> so you're going to shove me in the tree house? And... Wait, I did not think about that. That would be kind of nice to put you there. Um, <laughs> what is the cheapest way to grow food, garden, or um, I think she means livestock to start with? Uh, definitely starting your own seeds, but this is May, and it's way too late for, I mean, like 95% of the country now. So the world now, for that matter. Um, so you may have to get live plants. I just today got some off of Facebook marketplace. A lady was selling, she grew too many. So that's a cheaper way to do it. But of course, seeds is the good way to do it. Um, uh, okay. MK says, should we cash out our retirement? We have a hundred thousand dollars in retirement mm -hmm. accounts that we have not touched. We still owe $94,000 on our home. Would you recommend cashing out one of those to pay for a home? No, probably not. I mean, especially if your house is 3% interest, 3 or 4% interest, it's it's probably about equal now. What I would do if I were you is I would just get a job and work for a year or two and just crank it out and be done with it. But, um, you know, it really wouldn't pay yeah, necessarily. See, I think so. I would pay my house, not, not doing the interest part, but I would want to pay my house off. You can lose a 401k if wow. if the business goes bankrupt. You can lose your 401k if that's what it is. I didn't know if that's mm -hmm. what she had or not. Or the stock market can crash and you could lose it all. And then you wouldn't have your savings and you wouldn't have your house paid. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. So if you've got like 100000 for each one of you, I would take part of it and pay off the house and keep the other you know, part that you have, because you can immediately, once you pay that house off, start adding to your savings again, you know, like $2,000 or $1,000, whatever you're paying for your payment a month and start building up the savings again. Yeah. Pretty quickly. I mean, it's, so it's, up to it's you really, it's really up to you. It's one of those things, you know, you're in a comfortable position that you could do either or. Mm -hmm. Um, is that the mortgage question? Yes. Okay. Let's see. What Bible commentary do we use? Dorothy wants to know. I don't use any. I mean, I just read the Bible. So um, I, I don't really, I, I mean, I'll read, use Chuck Swindell's study Bible and I'll read his commentaries a little bit, but not. I get, I have like four or five pastors that are really good that they explain the Greek, the Hebrew and that type of thing that I watch. And you know, I, I know they're really good. I trust what they're saying and I compare it to the Bible and that type of thing. So that's what I do more now, just because with my chronic fatigue, it's harder for me to study something like a commentary. Does that yeah. make sense? Thank you, Beth. And thank you. Oh, I missed thank you, Beth. Who the other person was thank you both of you for your super chat. Thank you, guys. She says she loves our Dining on a Dining cookbooks. And oh. we'll get it together planner. <laughs> See, we got our planners. For those of you wondering, we have they're not some dated, planners. right? They are undated, dated. so you can use them all the time. So thank you. I'm glad you really like that. Um, let's well, one see. Thing about, uh, commentaries is they tend to uh, people can <clears throat> suggest things to you that you wouldn't find in the text if you read it yourself. It might be better to read it yourself. Yeah. yeah, Mike said sometimes commentary suggests things that you wouldn't normally think of, and sometimes it's better just to read it yourself. But so, I, yeah. th that's kind of why I do the pastors because they've gone with a whole bunch of different commentaries, you mm -hmm. know, and so you could do either one. And like I say, with my chronic fatigue, it's harder for me to study a commentary. So you could do either or, you know. Um, but, okay, let's see. How long does herbal tea last? It'll last a long, long time. Yeah, a really, really long time. Um, 
let's see. What level of income do you recommend for going off grid? Well, you need to sit and figure out how much you're going to spend and double it. And then that's probably about yeah. what you want to do. What you have to do is take your own own family. We can't really come up with a price because, you know, we don't know the size of your yeah. family. I mean, we don't know what, you know. Going off was, grid in California is totally yeah, different. Yeah, I was just going to say that. If I'm going off grid in Kansas and have a piece of property where there's no trees, well, then I have to add the expense into buying wood or bringing wood mm -hmm. in, you know, compared to somebody that's going off grid in a forest. Mm -hmm. And so you have to get all those details down yeah. really carefully, write them down. Uh, what are our thoughts on the housing market? You just got to ride the wave. We've been through all the housing markets. We've lost money on mm -hmm. two houses. Mike and I lost thirty, almost $35,000 on two different houses where we actually had to pay for someone to take our house. So it just kind of depends, uh, you know, yeah. just ride the market. If you need to buy a house now, you got to buy a house now. Mike and I bought at the peak with his house because we needed a house. We needed a place to put books. So, um, Let's see, what is the best way to store flour long-term? Freeze it first and store it? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Wondering if you have any ideas on how to store butter. <coughs> so you can make ghee out of butter and then can it so you can long-term storage that. Otherwise, I just store mine in the freezer. Yeah, if you're not doing long-term, I keep it, it stays in no. the freezer for a long time. Yeah. It really does. Or am I gonna be making any more soap? Oh. No, well, I mean, I just made like 25 batches using a goat milk that I have, but full. I don't have it for sale because we had to take all that down. Any suggestions when I should start collecting my social security? I lost my job after 29 years and ineligible. I would do it right now. They have actually sat and figured that because people live so long now, it's better for you to take social security early than to wait and get the extra three or $400 a month. In the end, it ends up being the same. And your chances of dying later rather than sooner are higher. So you might as well start getting something out of it. So if it's 62 or whatever the age is, I would take it the day you can start taking it and I would start collecting it. So um, you homeschool your kids and then you say you take your kids to school. We do both. Whoa. Okay. What is the past date? What is the past? How good is Perk coffee for quite a while. It will lose its efficient. Uh, it will lose its concentrate or its flavor what's the word won't I'm be looking as powerful. For? Yeah, the flavor won't be as strong. But yeah, what are the pros and cons of Sheridan living in Sheridan, Wyoming? Don't come here. It's, it's awful. You know, yeah, well, it's terrible. I would There's not, nothing but cons. No. <laughs> yeah. Cheryl, do you think we, we should? Don't, see? We don't want anybody. It's so nice. We don't want anybody moving here. Cheryl, do you think we will see any relief anytime soon? I'm not sure what you're talking about relief from. Probably but, things going on. Um, I mean, are you talking gas prices, food prices? No, Is that what you're mean? General. Probably not. I don't see, usually when stuff goes up, it doesn't really come down much. Well, and the so. thing is, this has been building up for quite a while, and now all of it's just broke loose, yeah. you know, and so it's going to take a long, we're, we're so bad now financially in the financial world and stuff, it's so bad that it's going to take a long time. If it even starts right now coming back, it's going to take it a while to get back. Yeah. It would take but something short of year, but I don't see it doing recall. that. It's mm -hmm. just... It's almost, I see it as a snowball that's rolling downhill. And I, I personally I think we're about st halfway down. Yeah, I don't down see any way of stopping it at this point. So, so. Uh, personal question, is your dad still around? No, he died in 2020, the week before that thing going around <laughs> happened. Um, if he would have died a week later, I bet he would have died from that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure about that. So, okay. Mike, did you send me <laughs> questions? Okay, Mike, sending me questions real quick. And somebody asked about the cookbook. So if you have the Spiral Cookbook, our old 20th ed edition, this is it, but this does have uh, a few more recipes. And then this would be the next one. Volume two is the next one. And then if you're gluten-free, we have our gluten-free cookbook, which is this, volume one, in gluten-free form. Okay, I know that's a lot to say, but just so you know. And then we do have our undated oops back there oh then we do have our undated planners guys right here mike's getting me the questions so i'm just waiting for them to come through so we have our undated planners and i only have a few of these in stock because i'm having printing issues so just so you guys know 
if you want one, grab it. Um, okay, here we go. Saab, thank you so much for sending me the Prayer of Salvation two months ago. You are welcome. Oh, yes. We are so glad to hear that. And if you have questions, please let us know. Also, guys, if you don't have a Bible, email us. No, don't email us. Contact. Go, no, don't even oh. contact us. Go to Living on a Dime and go to the shop. And we have free Bibles. So if you go to Living on a Dime in the store, we have free Bibles. Just click on free Bible there. Um, Mary, we've saved $1,000 in emergency fund. Ooh. Then we had an emergency and we didn't have to go into debt. Very, Very good. good. We are working on saving up the funds we have spent. We spent $287 so far. Thank you. And you know what happens when you have that emergency fund? You don't get near as stressed when something breaks mm -hmm. down. You know, a lot of people get angry and mad and panicking. What am I going to do now? Worry, mm -hmm. fret, and anxious. When you've got that little bit of emergency fund, it doesn't take much either. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, shoot. Let's see. What do we want to do here? Let me think. Okay. Um, my son went to trade school and paid for it by himself. I feel he did better because he was paying for it. He has a good job now and very proud of him. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I they think feel, they, they feel good about themselves. Yeah. They, it gives them more self-confidence. That's one thing parents mm -hmm. don't think about, you know. Yeah. Um, Maria says, a great example is my son was given full scholarships and blew up partying. Oh, mm. I'm sorry. I was so devastated. And he worked at 16 and was pretty responsible till, until he went to college. I'll tell you, I I think 95% of people who are going to college should not be going to college. Mm -hmm. Doctors, lawyers, nurses. Well, there's even trade school for nurses, I think. I, everybody else, they, I don't think you should be going to college. I'm sorry. Maybe engineers. Trades, tra but, trade schools are really yeah. so much, especially now the way things are going to have tr uh, actual mm -hmm. trade and that type of thing. Um, Yep. Hello, Turid. Glad to see you're on here. Hi, Turid. Diana says, electric and gas. I use your tips. I turn down the temperature, turn it off when possible. My monthly average went from $256 down to $183. Oh, my word. Very, <laughs> Very good. good. Very, Very good. good. See, it's doable, guys. It really is. Mm -hmm. Uh, Susan says she's doing budget billing. She was paying three forty three a month, and now it's two nineteen a month. What's my view on budget billing? Well, you're going to pay it all in the end anyway. So if you want to do budget billing, that's fine. I personally don't like budget billing because then you get complacent, and when you see your bill goes from one hundred and fifty dollars in May, and then in June it's three hundred and fifty dollars because your AC is set on sixty five degrees you don't have any incentive to turn your AC down or the same thing in the heat in the winter. And mm -hmm. so I personally don't like budget billing, but I mean, if you want to, I guess you can. That's I guess I two, always think that almost just having debt a little bit, you know, another form of debt. I like to pay it all, everything all off that month and get mm -hmm. it done and over with in case something would happen and I lose my job next month, then, you know, I'd have extra to pay and I wouldn't be able to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Any suggestions for excessive sleep 14 hours or longer? I mean, you need to go to the doctor and see what they say, yeah. but I mean, it just depends. Some people just need more sleep, but um okay let's pull this one just a second guys i'm pulling all your bible questions to the side and we'll do those towards the end there um i paid off my montana house years ago when the economy was good one is rental now the eight tenants have been with me for 20 years that's great oh wow yeah good yeah. job suzanne send me more questions mike 20 years ago, daniel <laughs> tara someone posted on marketplace today the same exact wood furniture all picks like the set you did for your patio for a dollar I thought, do you know what that set could look like? Ah, you should put a link to my video on there for him. You should. That would be hilarious. And, but you know what's even more? You should grab that set because actually those retro they're sets, worse. they're selling a lot of them. Uh -huh. they're, I mean, they're, they're selling really... them a lot. Uh, I saw one quote was $2,500 for the same set. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Jay Moore, we jumped from winter to summer in Michigan, a hustle to get the yard planted. I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. Today I was out editing and then I would go plant and I'm trying to get everything planted before it rains tomorrow. So after the show, I'm going to go plant some. Okay, did you send me questions, Mike? Um, it's not coming through. Let's see, okay, here it is. How did your doctor appointment go? Uh, so nothing really happened. They put me on um, stimulant to try and help me to not be so tired. And then they put me on a slight medication. So just call me Michael Jackson and Elvis Presley. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe joining that. Well, no, I hope I'm not joining them. <laughs> Well, I'm not so sure about one. I'm pretty sure on the other one. But uh, so, uh, and it's not really helping, but whatever. Um, do you buy extra food for stocking up every trip at the grocery store? Susan wants to know. Yes, I do. At least one or two items. A few our, things. Our yeah. stockpile is about six months right now, so we're doing pretty good. Yeah. Um, and somebody said, I'm getting so burned out on stockpiling. I'm kind of doing the same thing. Yeah, me too. I was getting so much because we had moved and I got rid of it and mm -hmm. I wanted to get it rebuilt up again. And quite frankly, I was getting tired of doing basketfuls of food every I was single getting, time. I was I getting sick store. of food is what I was doing. I was too. So uh, what I do now is like, I, what I, I use my graham crackers. I used a box of graham crackers this week. So when I go, I'll probably buy two boxes, you know, or just yeah. something like that. I'm not doing excessive amount at all. Just adding a few extras. That's pretty much what I and unless yeah. I found something really good on sale, maybe, but not yeah. not too much. Um, okay. Oops, I just posted the wrong thing. Sorry about that, YouTube. I didn't mean to do that. I've messed up my um here we go. Sorry about that. Okay, just delete it, Mike, if you want. Um Okay. Uh Mike's pulling questions. Where did my questions go? I've lost my questions. Ah, here's my question. Okay. Uh, any suggestions for things to do when visiting Sheridan? Not really. We haven't been here long enough to really yeah, know to, much. I mean, right it, up in the no, don't tell them the, that. Well, they only get stuck. The only thing is, if you're going to just stay in Sheridan, but we do have Yellowstone west of us for a couple yeah. of hours west of us. You I know. know, the exit 23 has a rest area with a big visitor center. Go there. Yeah. They've got a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Julie says, one thing I've learned from you is to not make things so complicated, whether yes. it's cooking, debt, organizing. It's Very so true. Good. If you don't make it so complicated, you will have less stress, worry, and control. A side benefit is more time to focus on your faith. Yeah. And it's like Tara was saying on a video the other day that she had where they were doing to mix alcohol with, what was it, uh, or oregano, oregano. oregano, in order to use an antiseptic. Well, why put the oregano in? You could just use the alcohol. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we get things so we have to add more. That Then you're spending more money sometimes, you know, and things like that. So, yes, you, you save time and money if you keep things really simple. Um, Cindy says her stepmom worked for Social Security and said always draw at 62. Yes, you should always draw at 62 because you can still work. You can I was earn like say, $44,000 a year. Why not draw it and then just get a part-time job or yeah. something if you want to? Yeah, I would. Uh, okay, Josephine, send me the next batch of questions, Mike. Josephine wants to know what vegetables to grow. What do you eat? Yeah. I mean, be sure you grow yeah. what you eat because it's going to be a waste if you don't. And, yeah. And unless you're planning on canning and dehydrating and that type of thing, don't overdo. A lot of first time gardeners, they put out 20, 20 tomato plants, you know, and there's two of them in the family mm -hmm. or something like that. So they have a lot that they get overwhelmed at harvest then what to do with all of this stuff and working and taking care of it. So if you're a new gardener, just think small because some of those things can produce cucumbers. You know, you can have cucumber zucchini mm -hmm. running out of your eyeballs and you only need a couple of plants. So mm -hmm. think small if you're just starting, unless you're going to can and do something like yeah. that. Marlene, thank you very much for those. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. So I much. love my checkerboard, little checkerboard oh, thing. That was so cute. cute. Yes. I need to do the verse. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Um, well, Mike's getting me questions. I'll pull a couple that I'm looking here. Do we follow Dave Ramsey on the radio, YouTube, or his books? Uh, he is great and also a Christian. So, excuse me. Yes and no. We have never done his plan. Um, I don't totally agree with his plan. 
uh, 100%, excuse me, what is going on? I have a bubble stuck in my throat. Okay. And, um, but I do occasionally listen to his, uh, show, but I'll be honest, I mostly use it just to get ideas for my show. <laughs> Of because what people, what people, people if people are talking about it on, in other areas, then that means that probably a majority of people are thinking about these things. And so then mom and I uh, do videos on that. But I've never watched. No, him we don't. I have a general idea. What he, um, why is Joel Osteen? Be, uh, well, OK, that's a Bible question. But why is Joel Osteen bad? Joel Osteen is a motivational speaker. He is not a preacher. So he he really just he does not teach the whole entire Bible. And he's pretty much, if it feels good, that's the Bible. And that's just not the true Bible. So um, do you always, do you ever splurge or always live on the cheap side? Yes. Now that we have the money, I splurge and I don't feel guilty about it one bit. Mm -hmm. If you're debt free, so, you can spend yeah. and have a little bit of savings. You, mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with splurging on something yeah. you want. So that's, that's part of what you're getting out of debt for is mm -hmm. so you can have the freedom to, you know, yeah. Okay. Some. Next set of questions. Uh, under the median. Oh, hello. I actually have seen some of your videos popping up. You guys are doing good. My oldest son went to college debt free with major scholarships. My second son didn't go to college. Both make a very good living. Mm -hmm. Living college isn't nece always necessary. Yes. Yeah. My big problem with college is that 80% of the kids that go to college are just going to mess around. They're not actually going. Then the other 10% don't actually calculate if they need college. I know person after person after person. I know person after person. <laughs> they go to college, they spend four years, they get out and they're making $12, $15 an hour. And it happens do you all know the time. Almost every person I know that's gone to college is not really using that degree that much that they went for. They're doing yeah. something totally different. I And I'm 70 years old and I've met a lot of people and almost all of them are not using. Yeah. Not that I'm saying education, you can always learn stuff from it. But what they actually paid to go to get that degree, they could have just mm -hmm. gotten their job without it. Yeah. Um, actually, for some parents. Paying for college is like buying debt speeds and things. It's something they feel like they have to do to keep up with the other. Yeah, That's Mike true. said for some parents, it's like the parents have to keep up. It's like buying jet skis or whatever so their kids can keep up with the Joneses. They, they feel That's like true. they're hurting their children yeah. for some yeah. reason by not giving, giving them everything uh -huh. like that. Uh, somebody said, what do we splurge on? So I like the wood wick candles. They're ridiculously expensive. But I get like two a year. I like those. I splurge on this year. I'm splurging on plants. I haven't had a garden for about five years. And so this year I am splurging on plants. Um, we spend more money on hotels. Like when we go visit the kids in Colorado, instead of staying with people, um, partly just cause we don't really know too many people that we could stay with. But, um, I don't know. I don't, we don't really splurge a lot. Like we don't go, on vacation every year for i mean you nice. know like some families go to disney world to spend twenty thousand dollars to go to disneyland ten or twenty thousand we don't do that but gnomes gnomes i like gnomes but i do ask for those for gifts but yeah mm -hmm. so i don't know um do we use cash envelopes for your budget nope i don't i've never used cash envelope i would mm -hmm. never do it i think it's ridiculous yeah. and i think i think it's a bad way to budget that's one thing I really don't agree with. Here's why. Because if you put 250, okay. If you put $750 for groceries in your grocery envelope, but you could actually only be spending $250 or $300 on groceries, you're gonna spend that whole 750 because you have the 750 to spend. Instead of trying to cut your grocery bill so you can put all of that money on debt. So what I do is I just always look for the best price. And if there's things that I can't find for that price, then most of the time I just won't buy it. And I'll wait until it goes on sale. Or if 
inflation is happening or prices are rising, then I just realize, okay, the price is up. Now I just have to pay more. And it, it never made sense to me because if you have like an envelope for a uh, house repair and an envelope for car repair, well, for this month, well, my car might break down and it takes extra money to fix that car more than what I have in the envelope, but nothing's wrong with my house for that month. Well, I'm having to swap out, you know, or I feel guilty if I'm swapping out. So it just gets all kind of, it's more complicated than it has to be. The whole thing about your money is you just take, you know what you bring in each month and you keep all your bills down as low as you can and then just carefully pay them out. You know, why divide everything up? Because you might not, like I said, you may not need that automobile money that month or the appliance one. So why divide that all up and just just pay what you have to pay, you know, each mm -hmm. month? Yeah. Um, okay, sorry, let me go back here. Well, and, if, and also, you can hesitate on things and like say, oh, maybe I'll buy that tomorrow. Yeah, I'll Mike said, you know, stuff. wait and wait because then think about it because sometimes, you know, you may change your mind tomorrow. So, um, well, I like to say, okay, I'll get it tomorrow. And then tomorrow, I like to say, well, maybe I don't need it till yeah. the next day. Yeah, just keep pushing, <laughs> just pushing it off. Yeah. Okay, Tanya, I don't like to spend money unless I absolutely have to until you're out of budget. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. it. I buy nothing until I was out but of But nobody debt. does that. Yeah, they don't do so, it that way. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I this little tidbit I found out this week, well, we did a video on, or was it the live stream last week, of things not to spend, you know, you're spending money on stuff you don't realize you're doing that you could save and get yourself out of debt. And I read this week that... There are more tanning salons in the U.S. than there are Starbucks and McDonald's. That just blew my mind away. That is the biggest thing I see is everybody keeps saying, how can I save on groceries? How can I save on the gas? How can I do this? But very few people, you guys are the exception that are watching, but very few are cutting back on anything on any of their spending. They're still going to tanning salons. They're still getting their hair and nails done. They're still taking their kids, you know, mm -hmm. on these expensive day trips and stuff like that and yeah. just all kinds of things. So um Jan says she saved $70 on groceries today. You can do it. Wow. Yeah. Good job. Lynn yeah. says we are her new favorite YouTube channel. Thank oh, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I am 200000 in student debt and work at Goodwill at 40. Unfortunately, yeah, that's, that's what happens. the way a lot of people end up, unfortunately. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, Laura said her letter from the electric company said that she uses electric less than, or she uses less electric than 108 of her neighbors. <laughs> that's, that's funny good. that's good um josephine i'm living at an all bills paid rv but my family keeps asking for money well don't give it to them yeah don't I mean, don't feel pressure to yeah. give it to them mm -mm. i i, I don't wanna... okay this is the way i do my kids and even my grandkids i never gave them any money well i guess raising them too they just automatically knew this i taught them to be responsible <laughs> not to do this but I, I would not lend the money until like after Tar and Mike got married or my son and his wife got married. I would watch their spending. I would watch their habits, what they did. If they were out going out to eat, if they were spending their money on just crazy stuff all the time, and then they come to me and want some money, there is no way I would lend it to them unless it was a matter of life or death and they were dying. But just for, you know, to buy a new car, to get a house or something, I wouldn't do it. But I watched them. They were very careful. Tara put into practice everything. Mike eventually got on board and he was putting into practice. He did, you know, he did really good. I have to say, Michael is really good about catching on to stuff like that. And so I watched them. So if they needed money for something, I and they never did hardly. I think one I was gonna say, did we ask you for money? I can't even think when you did. I don't think we've I don't think you, you ever have. I mean, you helped me when I was single. Right after I but, moved out with the car, yeah, we but, just had the attitude that that wasn't an option. Yeah, yeah. and so, so we figured it out. Yeah, and my son and his wife are exactly the same way, and I watched their spending and how they did it, you know. And the grandkids, I've always told them, uh, you better be really above board because I won't lend you the money. And the only money I lent was what my one grandson 
uh, bought a car for me and he was making me payments, you know, but I would never have done that if I thought he wasn't careful with this money. And he was so proud of himself. He paid me off really in really quick time, you know, and everything. And he felt really good about doing that. And I wouldn't have done that if I didn't know his habits, you know, before I did mm -hmm. that. So, no, you don't have to lend them to your family members. You really don't, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Paula says budget billing is sometimes quite a bit more money over time. Make sure you check that if you are thinking. Yeah. So the budget billing, it can add up. And then if you move or something, you have to pay the whole entire thing at once. Yeah. And so I just send me the next questions, Mike. I, I don't, I, I don't would, recommend. Budget I would billing, not do but. budget. Bill. You have to be careful of these things that are supposed to be helping you to do mm -hmm. this. It's kind of like buy your furniture now and pay in three years or two years. You don't have to start paying for it in two or three years or something mm -hmm. like that. And what people don't realize is they forget about it. And then all of a sudden the two years is up and boom, they've got to pay the full amount right then type of thing and things like that. Mm -hmm. So be careful. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Mm -hmm. well, and a lot of the COVID relief had to be paid back. They didn't tell mm -hmm. you that. Yeah, oh. yeah, a lot of like the COVID relief and stuff, Mike said people had to pay back. Okay, I'm waiting for Mike to send me the next round of questions. Well, he is. Guys, we have our updated planners here. These are undated, so you can use them now for an entire year. 365 pages, 365 days, 366 days, just in case next year is a leap year for you. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it is or not. And then our Dining on a Dime cookbooks, guys. Don't forget to grab our Dining on a Dime cookbooks, Volume 1 and Volume 2. And then our gluten-free edition right here. They're all 25% off. And we forget to tell you, our Dining on the Dime cookbooks, if you're starting to have problems finding things at the grocery store, yep. we have all kinds of recipes like enchilada sauce or Italian seasoning, but even other things, you know, that you don't think of how to make tortillas, yep. uh, just a lot of things from scratch, how to make mayonnaise and yep. ketchup and mustard. And, and those things are all in there. So we're going to run through these questions and then we'll go back and answer a couple of the Bible questions that you guys had from before. Um, TV Junkie says, I did trade school for culinary and food service management, 22 making $60,000 a year. You go. That Fair. That's good. That's that good. That is great. Mm -hmm. um, Amelia says, Micro of Dirty Jobs has uh, scholarships for trade school. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's really good. Do you like living in Wyoming? Do I confess? I love it. I love it. I hate to confess because we don't want everybody Wyoming doesn't exist. <laughs> moving Wyoming here. Wyoming doesn't exist. Oh, yes. I love Wyoming. I really do. The climate's been just really nice. Mm -hmm. I love the climate and everything. And yeah, yeah I can't. Yeah. I can't, um, the town's great too, you know. Iris says, I started Social Security at 63 and now I'm 75. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do we stockpile any drinks? Just drink mixes, coffee, tea. I think that's all the drinks. Hot cocoa. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess we do stockpile drinks. Um, Kimberly, I emailed you a receipt from my Walmart. Uh, yes, I just saw that today. She said that her bill has gone up. Yeah. So some things, especially meat, has gone up. But, like, even chicken quarters, there has always been chicken quarters still at the grocery mm -hmm. store for 79 cents a pound. And mm -hmm. so you can still find some really good deals. Um... Okay, let's pull that one. What are your thoughts on remodeling your kitchen right now? It's tiny and hard to work in. Uh, well, I mean, if you want to remodel it, go ahead. It's not going to, um, I mean, that's, I guess, up to you. If you want to remodel She's thinking about it. the prices for lumber and stuff being more well, expensive. Well, so they say, they say that lumber is possibly going, going down, down. maybe, yeah. With interest rates going up, so people aren't going to be doing as much, so... Excuse me, I would say probably give it another couple of months and see, but yeah, I probably would. Yeah. Um, Denise, and on what? remodeling your kitchen, you may already know this, but you don't have to buy everything brand new. Tar got a brand new kitchen sink, small kitchen sink for free. Mm -hmm. You know, when we moved here, uh, some people had it. So be sure to check those types of things out for anything you need, all kinds of yeah. stuff. Uh, Dixie girl, due to the price of gas, I had to turn down a job yesterday because I would have cost me $125 a week in gas. Instead, I took a job at home. 
making much less, but I hardly have any bills. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you have to do the math. That's the way you, if you you're going to really earn, good figuring that out. Yeah. If you're going to earn $2,000 a week and spend $125 in gas, that's totally fine. But if you're going to earn $300 a week and spend $125 in gas, you mm -hmm. need to seriously yeah. reconsider that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Julie, They're should thinking. we keep cash at home in case the banks are hacked? I mean, yeah, I always would. I that, would. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I always say keep, keep your money and stuff in a different place. Uh, not different place, but different things. You know, you can have it in a 401k. You could have it a little bit in the bank. You can keep some at home. I'd keep it spread mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Uh, amazing Grace Grants, what happens to people in Social Security disability when they reach Social Security? It just switches over to Social Security then. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Okay. Uh, uh, what are my top three re favorite recipes in the cookbook? Oh, I don't know. It's my cookbook, so they're all my favorite. I mean, really. <laughs> I hate to the, say that, but the fir we yeah. first called the book fam family, yeah. frugal, frugal family favorites because we really, yeah. they were all at ones we love. So loved. for me, I like the peach cobbler, the apple cobbler or, or crisp. Um, I guess it's called crisp in the book. Uh, I like the green chili. We eat that a lot. The barbecue meat meatballs. Grandma's barbecue meatballs are good. a good one. Yeah. So Stew. we like all of those. Okay. Mike's going to send me the next batch of questions and we're going to answer a couple of Bible questions. Karen, I would like to hear your thoughts on Ezekiel 38, 39. Well, it's going to happen. <laughs> we just don't know when. Probably will happen after the rapture of the church. Pretty sure. Um, but I mean, it is true that Israel is going to be attacked mm -hmm. and God is going to step in and intervene. So that's why, um, you know, it's a miracle because that's it. It's going to happen. Um, do you guys think you must tithe to a church? What about as doing God's work on your own with the money or donating to a charity? I don't have a local church that I trust at the moment. Oh, you're looking at me. Um, well, if you're not if you're not going to a church right now, it's it's getting hard to find churches. It really is it's getting really hard to find really churches. Hard. And OK. Sorry. Do I got to say to this. No, I got to <laughs> say this real quick. As far as finding churches, I cannot say that we have attended a church in the last 35 years where we have felt that has really been Bible believing on target with everything they do. It's, and now, it's really, really hard. So first of all, don't feel guilty that you can't find a church. You should keep looking and you should keep trying, trying. but don't feel guilty if you can't. Now, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> well, I just wanted to make sure people know that it's yeah. not just necessarily it's not, you. And it's not yeah. you. That's one of the biggest things that a lot of uh, different organizations mm -hmm. are saying people are having a really hard mm -hmm. time with, uh, it, it's just part of the things that are happening now in the end times. Mm -hmm. they, that's just what's going to be happening. But as far as where to give your money, what I what I do in between, in between churches when we're trying to find churches and things like that is I, I do watch certain pastors on YouTube online. online. Yeah. yeah. When I, you know, mm -hmm. all the time and I choose very carefully. I pray about it. To, I just don't jump in and do it right away. I really pray about it. And then I, if I can't get them off of my mind, I will take my tithe money and send to them. And sometimes I will split it up and send to like two different churches, um, that type of thing. So that's what I do with my tithe money until I find a church, you know, and then I will start doing, uh, giving it to the church. Mm hmm. Is that and if you don't have a church or something, Mike and I have given to like children's homes. Yeah. Uh, domestic shelters, violent shelter, the, you know, domestic abuse type shelters. Um, some really good ministries that help, uh, like in times of hurricanes, poor needy yeah. people, you know, yeah. uh, different things yeah. like that, but you got to check them out and make yeah. sure. And occasionally we'll <coughs> sponsor missionaries. And then occasionally, um, if we find a family that's in need, like the husband has cancer and has to quit working and the wife is home with two or three little kids, like really little kids. And the husband comes down with cancer or something. Then we will sponsor them and help them, you know, but we know them personally. We don't ever donate to any GoFundMe accounts. 
Mm-mm. Nothing like that. Um, Be very careful yeah. with anything like that. And so we don't do anything like that. But yes, should you be tithing on your um, on your time instead of paying the money? To the church. <laughs> they want to <laughs> she know. She looked at me when I said that. I'm really, really um, kind of fussy about my tithe. No, it's tithing on your income. It's a matter of faith. Yeah, you tithe on your income. Your time is another whole. Oh, is she mean tithing on your time or on your income? Can you give your time instead of your money? As your time? Oh, instead of your money. You should do both. Yeah, you need to tithe on your money and then your time's a totally separate thing. And you need to tithe on your time because some people get into church work and things like that and they get so wrapped up in it, then they exclude their families and <clears throat> don't step up the plate for things like that. So you've got to be careful that you don't think that working in the church and doing that is it makes you a good person and it's going to it's a yeah. good thing, always a good thing because you can overdo. But no, the Bible's very specific about tithing, you know. And and I always say people say, Well, in the New Testament it doesn't talk about tithing. I said, You better want to go. It does. Yeah, but I would rather go with what the Old Testament says than anything the New Testament, because you know what Jesus says when the widow put her might tithe her might? She gave everything. Everything and whenever the Bible, the New Testament talks about giving, it's about giving oh, everything is what it talks about. We have a whole video on this. Yeah, if we you do. go to our YouTube channel, I didn't see where you're at, but if you go to our YouTube channel, click on the search on our thing. We have a just type in tithe, and we go into lots yeah. of details. But you, it is your time, and it's not giving old clothes mm-hmm. away. That's not tithing. You give ten percent of your your uh, income, and we're supposed to tithe. And then the third, second thing is you're supposed to give alms. That's giving to the poor. That's a totally different thing on top of the tithe. And we're supposed to give gifts. And that's another thing. And we talk about that in the video. Another thing, somebody asked me, do I tithe on Social Security? That's my income. Yes, I tithe on my Social Security. Any money that I get in, as a matter of fact, I not only tithe, I round, always round my tithe up. Like if I've if my tithe is supposed to be a hundred and say sixty dollars for that month, I will give two hundred because I am forever receiving things, gifts and stuff from different uh, people. People are bringing me vegetables from their garden. I get a lot of things given to me, so I figured that little rounding up is in gratefulness and tithing on top of those things too. So don't be stingy with God; He's never stingy with us. And if you start holding back on him, he's, he, he's going to withhold blessings. It's just going to happen. That's all there is to it. It's not that he's mean and hateful. But why should I give to a child or a grandchild and I keep giving and they never thank me and they never want to help me. They never want to have a relationship with me and that type of thing. And after years, you know, I'd rather give the blessing to the grandkids that just love me and want to just be with me, you know, and things like that. So be very careful about withholding anything, your love, your emotions, your, your money, your time, anything, you know, be careful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so shoot, where'd it go? Uh, crud. What do you think about a small church staying in Colossians in a Bible study for two years since I've been there? I mean, I would say they're very thorough. A what? <laughs> A, a, a Bible study staying in Colossians for two years. Oh, I mean, they're pretty thorough. So yeah, I would say there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. The well, best. As long oh, as the whole church doesn't only ever talk about Colossians. They never <laughs> anything at any other time. Well, I had a, the best pastor I ever had to this day it, that I've even ever heard on the internet or anything. The very best one I ever heard. He started in Matthew. He said, "I'm just going to preach through the Bible." And he started in Matthew and he was at the church for six years. And I think in six years, we're like on chapter four in Matthew. And I have never learned so much about the Bible as what I did under that pastor. So staying in a, in, you know, a book like that, that's not necessarily a negative because I really have did learn more about the Bible and how to study the Bible than any other time. Yeah. 
Uh, I just canceled plans to attend my daughter's wedding when I learned it is to be a satanic ceremony. First of all, I'm really sorry. Yeah. That but must secondly, be heartbreaking. As a Christian, you cannot... It was hard for you, things. I know, but you can't do it. If you have a child that is marrying the same gender, I would say the same exact thing. I mean, it would absolutely break my heart. But you, as a Christian, when you go to things like that and you participate, you are saying, I'm okay with this. And it's not okay. I mean, it's you're, ce you're celebrating what they're doing. You're everything. celebrating even. Yeah. Evil. evil. Mm -hmm. You're celebrating Satan. You're saying that God is a liar. And yeah, Mike said, you're saying that God's a liar. And I, I care more about what God says about me than what my kids or any other people, they can call me judgmental or whatever they want, but this is specifically what the Bible says. And, and, I think God honors us a lot yeah. and answers our prayers in amazing ways when we do something that hard, you know, in, to honor him. Mm -hmm. And I, he, you know, I, pr I pray that God will comfort you because I know that's a hard thing for you to have mm -hmm. done, but I think he'll honor that. I really will. Yeah. Um, let's see. God, God is your, God and family and then ministry. Yes. Like yeah. a church ministry. Yes. Yeah. It should be God first, then your family, then you do church stuff. If you're neglecting your family to do church stuff, you shouldn't be doing mm -hmm. the church stuff. There's something wrong. Um, I like Pastor Jack Hibbs, I think is what she's saying. It might have been a typo, but we do like Pastor Jack Hibbs. Love Pastor Jack, um, yeah. Let's see. Uh... If you want to go to church, find one that teaches the Bible and where you feel comfortable. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they need to only be teaching the Bible. If they're using other any other books to teach the Bible, like the Book of Mormon, the Jehovah's Witness, uh, Watchtower, anything like that, that is not a Bible-based church. So those aren't... And I recently heard of, uh, I don't know if it was Pastor Jack that said this or who it was, but somebody said, you know, if you go to a church service and they're not talking about Jesus mm -hmm. and using Jesus's name and glorifying Jesus. And through, using scripture and not yeah, just stories. Then that's a warning. That's a warning. You know, if mm -hmm. it's not all about Jesus dying for us and that type mm -hmm. of thing. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, how much is the cookbook, Amanda? I honestly don't know. <laughs> how much is the cookbook? Do you know? I go, go to livingonadime.com, click on the shop, and it's 25% off. I think this is 30, and this is like 26 or something. I think 29. We are almost out of volume one, though. They're sitting on the port in Seattle. But we have no idea how long it's going to be until they get here. So we're almost up. And the planner is only on our website, on our shop, livingonadime.com, uh, is where you can get our 365, 66-day planner. Um, Suzanne says she bought, she keeps receipts for everything she buys. It keeps her in check, so I do not overspend. Good Very for you. good. That's what we were talking about what the other day mm -hmm. when we use credit cards so much, we don't really realize how much we're spending, you know, yeah. and so that's yeah. a good way to keep track of it. Kelly says, I have no worries with rising prices because I've been dying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Very good. Oh, Kelly. Here's the thing. If people would actually use the tips in our book, I bet they're good. Mo the majority of people, their grocery bill would actually go down. Yeah. And mom and I actually mean, have a video so, coming out on this. But you know, yeah. pe people have said, well, how can you push a spending money on a cookbook when you're trying to teach people to save? Because our cookbook has saved more people tons of money. Mm -hmm. First use, first time they week they get it. We've had so many people say, I saved on my groceries so much from using your book. Mm -hmm. So I, I was telling Tara, I don't feel too guilty about, you know, talking about selling our cookbook and stuff because it usually helps people, you know, quite a bit. I think a lot of our viewers would pop on and say that, that you know, they it has helped them. You should them. feel guilty about selling your book anyway. Well, no, it's that's okay true. to sell the book. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> 
I keep looking out the window. I'm sorry, there was a dove sitting right. There's been a dove. Oh, she's sitting changing right the now. subject now. <laughs> it's just driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. There's a dove on the rail. I'm just kidding. We have more wildlife. Um, okay, let's see. Elaine, I looked for better chicken prices. The stores near me are a lot more money. So I took your advice and searched and found a store. And I travel a half an hour and save on all our meats. Yes. That's very good. Here's the thing. Yeah, People say it. gas is so high. Let's say you have to. Okay. You guys have to do the Put math. The pen to do paper. The math. Write it down. Do the math. If, let's say, you get 20 miles to a gallon, and we'll just go on the super high side. Gas is $6 a gallon. So let's say you have to drive 40 miles, two gallons of gas. That's $12 times two. Each way is $24. Okay. So let's say $25. You spend $25 in gas to drive 40 miles one way, but you find chicken or meat or whatever so that you save two or three hundred dollars. Go once to every two weeks. Freezer, yeah. Go every once a month. We did that in Idaho. Mm -hmm. And it is definitely worth it. We drove we, 70 miles in Idaho. We have Turid who's on here in Norway. This is <laughs> this is why I have no patience with people. <laughs> Turid in Norway, when we went to go visit our viewer in Norway, they drove eight hours each way to go to Sweden once a year and stock up on food. They had to cross the border several times because you're only allowed so much through each time. And they had to go back and forth several times. But they saved so much money by going to Sweden eight hours away that it was worth it for them to do that and fill their car up every single mm -hmm. time. I know prices are getting higher. I understand that. But there are things that you can do to still save money. and. Yeah. On Monday's video, it's called Inflation Isn't the Problem. <laughs> I'm going to really get some, some uh, backlash on that one. But inflation really isn't the problem for the majority of the people. And so we're going to be talking about that. So watch videos Monday coming <laughs> the Monday's video coming up. The so thing is, instead of away. doing over what the prices are doing and getting anxious and worrying and trying to figure mm -hmm. out or you know get so upset over it you need to start calming down and thinking okay mm -hmm. what can i do then to yeah. i've i've done juggled this for years prices have gone mm -hmm. up and down and i stopped buying mm -hmm. some things and had to start buying other things or i'd had to drive a ways mm -hmm. to go get stuff you just start being more adaptable because mm -hmm. if you're not going to be adaptable and adjusting to these things you are going to go crazy yeah. you will really yeah. will Doodle Two says we should take a picture every month and do a seasonal tree book. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. funny. So I've been doing this for almost 20, 19 years now. Dave was uh, one years old when I did this, started this. So I do this all the time. Usually I stop with Easter. This is the first year I've done a garden tree just because I felt like it. So anyway, <laughs> uh, Chuck says the Living on a Dive cookbook has saved my family money. Woo! There you go. Thank you. Amanda yeah. said, I went to Panera Bread today for free coffee. I had, and there was at least 40 cars in the drive-thru. I know. I know. I, 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 I was worried. driving over to TARS and the Dairy Queen had cars yeah. lined up. People were standing yeah. out. And even though it was Dairy Queen, I mean, a lot of the stuff, people think nothing of paying 4 to $6 mm -hmm. for a, a thing, for one person for a thing of Dairy Queen. That's yeah. as much more than I spend for a meal even. Yeah. You can get the planners, livingonadime.com, and go to the shop. That's where you can get those. And there's a video on there that shows inside how to use it. It's our 2022 planner, but it's the same exact planner, just undated. So just so you know. Um, let's see. Uh, the honey chicken and the maple glazed chicken are... Mm. That's um, some of our favorite. I mean, Lynn's people just love those. Favorite, she mm -hmm. said, her go-to's. Pastor Tony Evans. Yes, I like Tony Evans. Yep, I, he's a good he's one. A good one. Mm -hmm. uh, Grandma 54 says, my husband loves your buttercream frosting. It's <laughs> really good. I don't like canned frosting. I don't like it. I'll use it now and then, but I really don't um, Don't use it. Um, let's see. 
Susie, this might sound silly, but do you worry at all about Yellowstone blowing up? Nope, if it blows up, I'm not going to be here. <laughs> I know. Okay. It'll launch, it'll launch yeah, Mike said it'll launch us straight to God. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I know I Jesus. I don't worry about, I don't worry about dying it. anymore, really. You know, I, I that's such a peaceful thing, too, because yeah. um, once you're saved, you don't have to worry about it because what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to be in heaven. Yeah. BJ wants to know, would a root cellar help save your garden produce? Yeah. Yeah. That's how they use yeah. it for years and years. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see. Uh, your heart attitude is a, your heart attitude is the key about giving. Do we want to know how little to tithe or giving what we want back, or do we love God simply want to we please just, Him with yeah. His giving? Yes, that's what it all boils I, down I, to. Yeah, well, you'll find that if you do yeah. your heart, you'll give yeah. way above the tithe. Tithe way. Yeah. way you're above. you're not gonna ever outgive. You can't, and you can't outgive God. Give, uh, give yeah. God. Um, well, let me stop here and say, I, I have lived on almost no money for years and, um, my circumstance has been constantly against me financially, really, you know, mm -hmm. if you think about it, but I've never stopped tithing, <clears throat> never, ever, even though I've had pastors say, well, in your situation, maybe you don't, you shouldn't tithe. I thought, well, no, you know, why that I would never want to stop giving. Mm -hmm. And I can't always explain how I did everything that I did financially. It's hard for me to explain mm -hmm. because God has just done unbelievable things to provide for me and given me and worked out for me and done in ways. And I never talk about that too, too much, but uh, it, it's not all that I just gave up and I was really careful you know, getting out of debt. It was just, God has just always beyond blessed me mm -hmm. in unbelievable ways. And you said, well, that must be nice. No, I love God very, very much. And I tithe and I, I give, I give without even thinking about it to him. I just can't give him enough the way I give my grandkids. I would say, well, I'm only going to give you one piece of candy, you know, because that's all I really want to give you because I want the rest for myself. No, I would give my grandkids probably nine pieces of candy and keep one for myself. Why? Because I love them so much. Mm -hmm. And that's the way you should feel towards God. You know, he doesn't need it. He doesn't even, you know, or anything like that, but it's our heart. He wants. Yeah. Um, Josephine wants to know, is it in the Bible that you should not be, I think she means should not be friends with people who practice witchcraft. If they're practicing witchcraft, I would just stay away from that's them. That's really yeah. that's really dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Bible says to have you nothing mm -hmm. to do witchcraft, with medium um, sorcerers type things. Let me look it up here real quick. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, <laughs> let's. See. Yeah, you can still pray for them. Yeah, but of course I wouldn't. you can pray for them and. Um, and oh, here not be mean or hateful or anything, you know, but just be careful because it could hurt you. Uh, is this the, um, well, that's not it. I don't know if I can find the verse real quick here. Um, nope, that's not it. But, well, here, maybe this is the one I need. But the Bible... Bible, here's, okay, here's a good link. I won't read it all, but the Bible is very specific on um, staying away from witchcraft and sorcery. I just put a link in there for questions.org or com.org, I think. I can't remember. And um, you are, it's very specific that you're to stay away mm -hmm. from witchcraft. I have not, I couldn't find the verse real quick here, but yeah. Uh, K, uh, K4K asked, what if you don't know they practice witchcraft, but they do? What if you don't know they practice witchcraft, but they do? Well, then you need to pray and ask God for discernment. discernment but if you're yeah. asking that question, then you know they do. So it's not like you're not going to go to hell if no. you know someone who is practicing witchcraft and you're not participating in that. But we're to stay away from it so that they don't influence you to start doing it either. Mm -hmm. But, you know... But if you don't know somebody's doing yeah, it. Yeah, but if you don't know somebody's doing it, that's you're not, not going to be punished or no. anything. for. But, you know, you do need to pray for discernment because 
I've been around people that there would be, I can tell some, you can usually sense it a lot of times, yeah. you know, some people are more sensitive to discerning it than others just because they have the gift of discernment. But you need to pray that God will give you discernment. And, you know, I find that one of the most important things now that finding a church, uh, good preachers, uh, everything like that. Pray that God will give you good discernment. Mm -hmm. I, I think people need that more than anything. You can discern things in financial area, in every area. He'll give you discernment mm -hmm. and just ask, especially spiritually, you need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, that's true. Carol says bad company corrupts good morals. That's a that's a good one. Yeah, that's yeah, a good that's verse good to go to. Uh, what about baby formula shortage? Is it a lie or is it really happening? No, I think it's really happening. I think it is happening. Um, but the thing is, this is one case like we keep telling everybody have three months to six months supply of all this stuff. And this is a good example because now moms are having trouble finding formula. Yep. And so that's why we're not we're not trying to do this stuff to scare anybody and to make people panic and get worried and anxious, but just to have you for you to be a little bit prepared, because now uh, for some of you that don't know, moms are having trouble finding formula for their babies. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we say get some of this stuff stockpiled ahead of time. You don't need huge amounts and go through a lot of elaborate stuff, but at least have food and a few things. In case this happens, you never know. You could wake up tomorrow morning and you never know what could happen. Yeah. Um, El Solis Soils says, not just beans cookbook. So not just beans was the original name of our cookbook. I know. Oh. It was a bad name. I know. She said she got it as a college student in the 90s. Oh, my goodness. So we just had written it. 1999 when it came out. Yeah. And she's been cooking scratch ever since. Thank you, oh, Jill. Right. You've You're been welcome. with us a long time. That's wow, right. that's something. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, Laura says she cooks everything at home, and she uses our cookbooks and saves a ton oh, of money. Thanks, Thank you. Laura. Uh, do you write out your prayers or do you just talk to God? No, I just talk to just God. Talk I don't to have God. patience to sit there and write out prayer. <laughs> you know, if you want to and you're up and you do that, you yeah, you can. There's nothing, there's wrong, nothing with wrong with doing wrong. that. <laughs> I don't have patience no, to do that. So. Yeah, you can do that. But the thing is, too, you've got to remember God's your father. He is. Yeah. He's your father. And you can talk to him just like I know some people haven't had loving dads, you know, and stuff, but like loving dads should be. You can talk to him just like he's just your father. Mm -hmm. Jesus is your friend. You know, you can just talk to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I better not tell mom this. Amy says, we just had a cookie store open and each cookie is $5. Oh, my wow. word. <laughs> I'm not too surprised. <coughs> yeah. Um, Tara how, keeps telling me I sell my cookies too cheap all the time. So it's your own fault. I've told you. <laughs> Des, Des says, how to stay strong when unequally yoked with your husband. I love God and I'm trying to follow him 100%. It feels like I am alone because my family doesn't want to. Well, you just have to stay the course. The Bible yeah, says that if persevere. he... If he is willing to stay with you, that you are to stay with him. Mm -hmm. And you are the influence for your family. You are the one that will save your family. The Bible specifically says that the non-Christian will save their family. So what does that mean? I think that it means that as long as you're at that while you're praying for them, God is working on them. You may not see it, but I really think that with you staying and then seeing your faithfulness and your faithfulness to God, God will reward it. God never said it's going to be easy. He specifically said that we're going to have trials and tribulations. So why, I'm not saying you're doing this, but why are people surprised when as Christians, we have bad things come along? God's already told us that. And our light is going to shine in how we deal with those bad things. And so I, you know, I'm really sorry, but I think you're doing probably a good job. It sounds like if you're able to keep going. One thing that helped me, I was going through a really hard time was something similar to this. And I, I was just ready to give up. I thought I can't cope with one more emotional, you know, 
of hardship and all this stuff. And I was praying like crazy because I thought I was, it was it. And I was crying and God very quietly said to me, he said, you know, in my heart, he said, you know, you've, you've been a Christian all these years and you're just, you know, you're doing all the Christianese, all the good Christian stuff, all this things like this. And he said, now the first thing that's been hard has come your way. And that, you know, I'm going through the first challenge I'm going through really bad thing. He said, are you willing, are you willing to hurt, be lonely, suffer if just one person makes it to heaven? You've, you've talked the talk all these years. So now I'm, I'm putting you up to, to bat. Are you willing to do that if even one person misses your ter- eternity? And that's why we keep doing this. <laughs> and after that, I thought, if only one person, even when mm-hmm. we talk to you guys and some of you get upset with us, it's like if, if, if even one person makes it yeah. and believes in Jesus because of it. Yep. Then it's worth it. All the criticism, yep. all the everything. And I'll tell you, I know we're doing it right. <laughs> and I'm not saying that from a prideful way. But how do I know? Because in the last three days, you can't three imagine. days, we have ticked off. Or I have ticked <laughs> off. It doesn't matter who. The Mormons, the Catholics, people for the Baptists, people against the Baptists. The Lutherans, the Satanists, and who was the other one? There was one other one. Republicans and Democrats. Oh, yeah. Republicans and the Democrats. <laughs> We've tipped them all off. And we don't hate any of them. <laughs> but here's the thing. The Bible says that you will be hated because you are a Christian and you are sharing the gospel. So you know that the more that comes at you, Satan is really upset with you because you continue to tell people that Jesus is the only way to heaven. You cannot work your way to heaven, period. You can't. You have to admit that you're a sinner, believe that Jesus died for your sins and rose again, repent of your sins and give your life to Christ. That's it. All of the good deeds in the world are not going to save you. They're not. When the Bible talks about becoming a Christian and your deeds will show that you're worthy, it's because when you're a Christian, then you are so thankful that Jesus died for you, that then you are willing to go and show people his love by doing those things. But those things do not get you into heaven, period. It doesn't. And so when you are having all these things coming at you and you're feeling your loneliness, that's actually probably a good Good thing. thing. And I know it's super hard because you're probably super, super lonely and you feel like you're the only one, but you have to keep listening to pastors, keep listening to pastors like Jack Hibbs and David Jeremiah. They're sound Bible-based pastors. Keep filling yourself up with those kinds of um, preaching so that you know you are not alone. This is an attack from Satan because you are doing something that's right. And and if things aren't happening from you, Satan doesn't attack those that are doing nothing for Jesus. I mean, when you're doing nothing Mm -hmm. for Jesus, Satan doesn't attack you. And it's kind of a comfortable place to Mm -hmm. be on this earth, you know. But another thing, too, in a practical sense, surround yourself with if you have gal friends or people at the church, you know, Mm -hmm. if you can make close friends that you can, um, you know, break down with every once in a while or something like that, that can encourage you and help you. You know, that's more of a practical type thing, too, to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm Lutheran here. I'm curious what you said to make one mad, make a Lutheran mad, because I said that they shouldn't have women pastors and that if they're marrying the same gender, you shouldn't be going to that church. And a lot of, unfortunately, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Methodist churches are doing that now, unfortunately, and that's strictly forbidden in the Bible. But I mean, I I hit them all this week. (laughs) But you know what? I'm sorry, that just tells me that I'm doing the right thing and I'm just going to keep going until I 
stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, so. but you know, it's, it's just one of those things that, um, you know, you have to accept. Thank you for the super it, chat and the Bible oh, verse. That's the one you. I was looking for. Matthew 10, 22, and we shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but that he endureth to the end shall be saved. Thank you very That's much. That's a perfect verse. That yeah. was the verse That's I was mm -hmm. trying to think of, but my brain is mush at the moment. So, um, okay, let's see. And uh, By the way, if you need a Bible, we give away free, easy to read, large print Bibles. No cost to you. Now, if you can afford one, please buy it because we only do this with donations from people in, in our own pocket. So if you can't afford one, it's only $9.50, including the shipping. But if you, if you cannot afford a Bible, please, we are happy to. God has been providing everything we need to be giving out Bibles to where we just had a semi come. With a pallet of Bibles yesterday, we're having so many, I'm having to order them by the pallet now. It's great. But don't feel um, ashamed or whatever that if you can't afford a Bible, please go get yeah. one for free and we will send it to you. Living on a dime, go to our shop, use the coupon code free Bible and it will be totally free for you. And you know what I like about sending this out? We've had more people that have gotten their free Bible and they're so appreciative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For those of you that have helped us pay for them, you mm -hmm. know, they're so appreciative. They're yeah. just, it's amazing. Yep. Um, somebody says those are progressive Lutherans, Presbyterians, and Methodists, not conservative ones. Yes, I and do see, understand we're that. Not, I do understand that. We're not, it's it's not the de denominations at all. Mm -hmm. It's what's taught, you know, that's what we're, that we're talking about. And so it's like I told Tara. If somebody says something to me about, well, we believe this and you shouldn't be believing that and everything, it doesn't make me angry. You know, if they say what you believe is wrong and you shouldn't be doing this, I don't get angry about it. I just don't even think anything about it because I'm so grounded in the Bible. I know what they're saying. I know the scriptures. I know what they're saying is not right. And so I'm secure in my faith. I'm yeah. secure in Jesus. But what I find interesting is, when we talk about the Bible and that Jesus is the only way, you know, and and do Bible scriptures, it's interesting. They get very angry, very livid. And we know immediately, well, you don't know what you're talking about or this is what we believe and you need to. And we and they get very uptight. And what's interesting is if we say, can we send you something or they say we want to send you something to we'll read their stuff. We know all we've studied all this stuff, but they won't read our stuff. I find that interesting. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like the claws are coming out, you know, it's the wolf in sheep's clothing type of yeah. thing. Yeah. There's not one denomination that doesn't have Something. some church that's got something wrong. Every single so, denomination has a problem, but you try to find what you can as close, but if your church is specifically saying that your works are going to get you to heaven, you have to do things to get to heaven and earn your salvation. You will only know if you're going to heaven when you die, because then you'll know if you did enough. If you think that, that's not what, that's the, Bible not says. what the Bible says. Uh -uh. And so um, we're just saying, find a place a denomination, a church, or something, a pastor online that teaches the Bible, you know, straight. Yeah. I didn't hear you say it, but one of the comments the lady had said, uh, when you're choosing a pastor, it helps to know the Bible so you know if they're on track or not. Yeah, yes. somebody said it helps for you to know the Bible and read the Bible so you know if a pastor is on track. Um, okay, let me give you for a few verses on why working does not get you into heaven. Your good deeds don't get you into heaven. John 10, 28. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. That you, means you can't yeah, do register anything. register that. Nobody can get unsaved. You can't do anything mm -mm. to get into heaven. And um, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. What is that saying? Lord, Lord. 
uh, or not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Those are people who are working, doing works to get into heaven. Who think they're great Christians. They're doing all the Christian stuff. Yeah. Um, let's see. What's the next one? I'm trying to go through these here. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of your works. Why? So that, I mean, I added the why. So that no one may boast. The whole point of Jesus dying on the cross and rising again is so that you cannot take credit for what Jesus did to pay the price for our sins. You cannot take any credit at all. It is all on Jesus. God sent him to pay for your sins only. So you can't boast. Boasting is pride. And do you know that Satan's main thing is pride? Yeah. That's why he got kicked out of heaven was from his pride. Yeah. And how many of us, that's why it says, so you don't boast. He, mm -hmm. they don't, he doesn't want you to be like Satan and be prideful that I've worked to get myself to heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a scripture now. Do you, real, do you realize what we just said? It said it's a gift. Tara didn't have to work for her birthday present for me. She didn't have to do anything. I just gave it to her. And the only thing is, if she doesn't accept that gift, she doesn't get it. And that's the same way with Jesus. If you're not willing to accept him totally and him only, you don't I get mean, the gift. Think about it. You had might as well. It would be like slapping <clears throat> Christ in the face saying, nope, I'm taking credit for this. Yeah. Every time you do a good work and you want to take credit for it, you are scourging his back. Yeah. You're scourging his back. And so, yeah. Did you also, uh, the fruit of the spirit belongs to the flesh in Galatians 5? Uh, no, I didn't do that one. The Which one's that? The Which one is it? In Galatians 5. 22 is the fruit uh. of the spirit, but I can't remember which verse belongs to the flesh is before that. You're really uh, belittling Christ and what he did for you and saying he wasn't good enough. And, and another thing, when he died, what did he say? It is finished. Yeah. It is finished. Yeah. Two words or it, three words. It is finished. How can it be more, you know, clear there? You, nothing else has to be done. Nobody has to do anything else, but you just have to accept him. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Do you have any other questions, Mike? Um, you, did you just unplug the computer? I did not. Are we still here? Hello? Are we here, guys? It's showing the power Can anybody on. see me? Can you guys see us? Hello? Oh, hello, hello? Oh, because it turned off. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. Karen, when you are sincere, when you ask Jesus to come into your heart, you will study his word and you will come become a changed person. You will find joy and have a generous heart. Yes, mm -hmm. Karen is exactly right mm -hmm. on that. We do works to please God, not for salvation. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's because we are so thankful for what he He's did done. that um, then we want to do good works. And we're becoming more Christ-like. We're supposed to always keep becoming more Christ-like. Yep. And yeah. so we want to do the good works. Uh, uh, okay. Let's grab also, the rest of the questions here real quick. There's also Paul talks about uh, works being uh, something that you receive wages for. Wages yeah, that's that. true. Mike said um, that Paul talks about works being something that you get paid for. You know, Jesus paid the price for that, not you. Um, okay. Let's grab the rest of these real quick. Do you like John MacArthur? Um, a lot of people we know do. <laughs> a lot of people we know like John MacArthur. And I wouldn't say he's a false prophet. I wouldn't call him a false teacher at all. I think he is a Bible-based preacher. But I don't agree with some of the things 
that he thinks about the Bible. And so um, I would say that if you're going to his church and it's the only church you can go to, or you can't find anybody else online to watch, I mean, I think it's probably fine, yeah. but I don't totally agree with everything that he says. The same with Billy Graham. I wouldn't. I, it's one of those things where none of them are absolutely perfect. So you've got to yeah. pick and choose what you can live with, you know, what yeah. you can be comfortable with. Like I would not um, watch Billy Graham. I, I, some of the things that he said later in life, I completely disagree with. He said things like Muslims and Buddhists and Christians all worship the same God. That's not true at all. Um, it's kind of like saying, like Dallas Jenkins likes to say that Mormons and um, evangelical Christians worship the same Jesus. We don't. And so it's kind of the same thing along with that. Um, if I, Ellen, Elaine wants to know if I don't agree with the church my husband has chosen, is it okay to go a different one? My husband doesn't mind, but is it biblically okay? Well, the Bible That's doesn't say anything either way about that yeah that's it. if your husband doesn't mind i guess if he's in agreement i, I think guess. that would be the main thing um i mean i would say the only thing is if it would ever cause strife in the marriage by doing that is the only yeah way I'd hesitate mm -hmm. but if he's agreeing you know yeah um, so that's a hard one i'm you you'd have to just kind of use your own discernment on that one i think yeah Alicia says my husband was not saved when we got married. Eventually he came to Jesus because he said he sees how I walk the talk. Very good. Very good. Um, Kenneth says the truth upsets many people. Yeah. So if you're at peace, if you're a Christian and you say something and you're at peace with what you've said between you and God, and if you're questioning, if you said something, pray and ask God, say, show me if I was wrong. Yes. Yeah. He will show you if you were wrong. But if you feel like you were right, People don't want to know the truth. Um, and so, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, it comes back on you because they don't want to hear it and Satan is fighting against you telling the truth. So, Maria, if you involve yourself in witchcraft, will this stay in your family for three generations? Is that true? So that's Old Testament, but with Jesus dying for our sins, um, you can break that curse. Mm -hmm. That is a curse that's in the Old Testament, but Jesus died to break those bondages because he knew that none of us would be able we wouldn't to, be able to um, ourselves. You know, we wouldn't be able to do enough mm -hmm. to, because here's the thing, you know, when you become a Christian, you're it's not that you're never going to sin again you are going to sin again the thing is your sins have been forgiven and the bible says that when we get to heaven they're not going to be remembered anymore because we are safe because jesus gave his life for our sins the sins in the past the sins that are in the future and the sins now all done all forgiven mm -hmm. they're just gone yeah. If you believe in Jesus. Yeah. Lynn says, I'm reading the Bible I received from you. Will it be called reading the Bible if I only read the New Testament? Yes. But I would also read the Old Testament. There's a couple of chapters like Numbers and Leviticus that are kind of hard to get through. But really, the Old Testament isn't that hard. And there's several things that it helps shine light on things in the New Testament that you wouldn't realize and even things Before. like Psalms yeah. is comforting, you know, and Proverbs give you gives you wisdom. Yeah. And you just learn a lot of things in the Old Testament. You really can't. Jesus was always quoting the Old Testament. So were a lot of the disciples always quoting the Old Testament. So if he thought it was good, you know, and they thought mm -hmm. it was worth quoting, then I I think we should well, read it, too. Also, yeah. you can't really understand the Bible if you don't read the Old Testament. No. Yeah, you can't understand the, the whole, whole Bible thing if you don't read the all. Old Testament because. Um, but that's where studying uh, the Bible yeah. comes in. You know, you. That's why I like listening to some of these preachers that explain a lot of the stories and the things in the Old Testament, and they compare them to the New Testament, and they mix the two together, and it makes it totally understandable, and it kind of opens your eyes. 
so that when you start reading the Old Testament after learning some of these things, you think, oh, I never thought about that or that's what that meant type of thing, you know. Yeah. Um, how do I stop being afraid of Judgment Day? You go and you continually, until it goes away, read Hebrews. If you're a Christian, you need to go read Hebrews 8, 12. It is, and I will forgive their wickedness and I will remember their sins no more, period. When we get to heaven, Jesus is not going to discuss all of our sins with us. If you're a Christian. If you are a Christian, the only thing when you get to heaven that is going to be judged is what you did to help further the kingdom of Christ, to help spread the word, to help spread the good news about Jesus dying for people. You're, we're going to be judged on that, and we're going to get rewards in heaven based on that. But we are not going to get up there, and he's not going to give us a whole list of all the bad things we did, because it says he remembers our sins no more. So you go write Hebrews 8, 12 down, and you just keep repeating it and repeating it and repeating it until you have it memorized. And when it keeps coming up, you keep repeating it again out loud, because that is from Satan trying to discourage you and get you off track. And you fight Satan by quoting Bible verses and singing praise songs that are Bible verses that are directly taken from the Bible. And so that's how you fight that and it is a battle and you're gonna have to fight it and you know what god sees the sin well god knows knows you everything you're going to do wrong everything you did in the past all of this stuff he knows these things he when he formed you in your mom's womb he knows everything about you everything you're going to do everything as long as you've accepted jesus he still loves you anyway he doesn't care what you he knows it all about he knows everything about you and he loves you anyway and when you learn how much he loves you you know i mean he gave his son to die for you how can you even grasp that that's mm -hmm. how much he loves you you think uh, somebody that loves you that much is going to stand and condemn you on judgment day yeah and say what were you thinking of how horrible of you. No, he loves you. And that's why we get a lot of people asking, you know, well, will my pets be in heaven? Will we recognize our loved ones in heaven? And I heard this the other day. I thought this was the best way of explaining it. Uh, we're going to have our eyes so much on Jesus and God and be praising God. And that is going to be our whole focus. We're not going to notice anything else. And I was thinking when I was a bride walking down the aisle to my groom on my wedding day, there were loved ones all around me. I There was tons of them. But you know, I couldn't tell you who was there to this day. I didn't see anything. All that I saw was my bridegroom. That's all you're gonna see is focusing on Jesus and his love and God. You're not gonna, it's gonna be, we won't even be noticing things like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you make new friendships when you have moved with Christians, but you don't belong to a church yet? You know, you just you can just start trying different Bible studies, different um, get togethers. Even if you don't belong to a church, most churches are more than happy to have people come in and join. Mike's part of a Bible study and he doesn't even go to that church. He's done that for the past 10 years. And so you don't necessarily have to be a part if of there's a, a women's yeah. group, a women's mm -hmm. study. Yeah. And and sometimes like even if you um, have a sewing guild or something like that, a hobby like that, that you like to do. If you go to some of these, I've met a lot of gals that were Christians at these, you know, and became friends with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, do you guys watch The Chosen? No, I do not think I've been actually researching this just to make sure that. I have not, since the day it came out, I have not had a good feeling about The Chosen. So for the past, let's see, going on, what, three years now, I have been doing a lot of research. And just this week, I came across a video. And basically, he was saying that it's basically 
going against the second command, the commandment to not have any idols and trying to do, I'm trying to think of the shortest way to say this, but he was saying in there that when you have pictures of Jesus or you have art impersonations of Jesus, that's making an idol of something that you worship. And I know a lot of people say it makes the Bible come alive. The Bible's already alive. You don't need something or someone else to tell you what's in the Bible. And um, God, all you have to do is pray and ask God to reveal it to you and just read it yourself yeah. and he will reveal it to you. But here's the thing. There are enough inconsistencies in the show with things like uh, Jesus telling Nicodemus and I think it was Mary maybe, what does your heart say? Follow your heart or something. Follow your heart. That is 100% unbiblical. It's not in the Bible. He's never Nowhere said in like the it. Bible. Mm -hmm. You are not to trust your heart. Your, your heart is deceitful. And just that right there is enough for me not to watch it because you are going on emotions instead of facts. And then there's um, enough, uh, you know, I know there's a scene where they're joking around about, about um, Andrew maybe dancing and Jesus says, well, even some things I can't do. Okay. I totally understand that's supposed to be a joke. I get that. But to me, that borders on blasphemous. I mean, I, I, I really think it is. To say that Jesus can't do something, even if it's a joke like that, you don't joke around about stuff like that. I, I just, I don't think that it's a good show to be watching. And then there is the whole Mormon and Catholic influence on the show. I don't, Christianity, Catholicism, Mormonism, they, they don't share the same Jesus. I know Dallas has said that they share the same Jesus. They don't. And so that's my personal view on it. But I don't think that it's something that Christians should be promoting. Well, I have, I've never ever watched any um i haven't seen the passion i haven't i i don't watch christian there's a lot of movies that talk about the life of abraham or the life of esther uh different things like that i i never watch those movies and just because there's so many things in them that aren't consistent with the bible you know different things and um I would rather just get my information from the Bible. It, it, it sets in your mind thoughts of certain, you look at the Bible a certain way when you see it in a movie and that never goes away. And it's different from what is in the Bible. And so it kind of gets confusing a little bit to me. I just, I don't know. I just have never had a good sense about movies christian movies like that that do the the try to do those biblical things or you know biographies of these people and stuff like that they just it's always off something's just always off a little bit so i just stay away from them. i don't need them for any reason because i mean i have the whole story from the bible and too when i watch movies i do it for entertainment you know and just to get away from it all and relax so movies are not for me to learn you know the bible and stuff mm -hmm. like that yeah. uh sarah says jesus forgives and if we haven't forgiven a person and can't find them to do so what will happen to us i saw a youtube video showing a person going to hell for not forgiving you're not going to go to hell if you don't forgive someone what's going to happen is you're going to live in hell on earth <laughs> Because it's like drinking poison. It's like you drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Forgiveness is for you. Mm -hmm. And if you can't find the person or talk to the person, you can still forgive them mm -hmm. and let it go. Mm -hmm. We have family members that we had to stop seeing that really tried to destroy our lives. I mean, they literally did everything they could to try and destroy Mike and I's family. And I mean, we're talking court system. It was, it was bad. It was really bad. 
we hadn't we had to break ties with those people we have forgiven them but it doesn't mean that we need to have a relationship with someone who's um trying to harm us and who doesn't want to be forgiven so forgiveness has absolutely nothing to do with reconciling or talking to that person it has everything to do with you mm -hmm. as a mother how do you get your adult son to accept jesus i don't want him to go to hell you don't you don't have anything to do with it it is all through jesus christ but you are to pray for them pray continually moms you have no idea yeah. how strong your prayers are for yeah. your family you have no idea mm -hmm. and you know i would not get discouraged who knows how many people that have kids like that and then let's say their kid was killed in a car accident you do not know if that child was alive in that car for 30 seconds to five minutes, however long, that they came to Christ at the very end because you continually prayed for them. You won't know until you get to heaven, but you need to pray for them. But here's the thing. You can only pray for them while they are alive. You cannot pray for anyone after they have died. Praying for someone after they have died is forbidden. And... It's not going to change whether they go to heaven or hell after they have died by you praying for them. You can only pray for them while they are alive, but you can really make a big difference, even if it doesn't look like you're doing anything at all. You are. And you never know, because sometimes God will use a friend of theirs, uh, maybe yeah. a teacher of theirs. Mm -hmm. You just keep praying because it may not be you that brings them to the Lord. It may be somebody else. So don't give up hope. You just never know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, maybe your praying will send that other person exactly. into their life exactly. that they needed because they couldn't hear it from you, but they would hear it from. Pray that their the eyes and their ears will be open, you know, yeah. that they'll be willing to, their heart will be willing to receive yeah. it when they hear it. Uh, okay. I didn't know that there was a Mormon influence on the Chosen. There is a very large. Mormon influence and the chosen and the executive producer, the uh, distribution um, company that puts it out a lot. It's a very, very significant. Um, it's a very significant influence. Now, let me say, I personally know some of these people personally. Okay. They are really, really, really nice people and i love them i tr i truly do but that influence and that religion is not the same as what bible based evangelical christians believe and so um that's why we don't um promote it well and another thing too is why I don't watch a lot of these Christian movies is whoever's directing it, whoever's acting in it, or the whole anybody involved in it, they're bringing their what they believe to the script, to the whole thing, and they're they're influencing it the way they say things, do things, and that type of thing. And that may not be the way the Bible talks about. Mm -hmm or believes you know so you have to be kind of careful on these things well and going back to our bible verse in matthew i can't remember what it was but just the fact that so many people are raving about this and loves it tells me there's something wrong because the true gospel of christ people get very angry with mm -hmm. and so right there the fact that it's so popular tells me that there is something wrong because if it was the true gospel, people would be angry and they you know, would not Jesus, be promoting it. They didn't like Jesus. No. He, he had to. He was hated he, in his day. He was always talking to a crowd and then have to run and leave because they were coming. You know, somebody was coming after him yeah. all the time in the Bible. Um, let's see. All I want to do is please our Lord and Savior. I think the only way to do that is to be thankful and go to the Bible for answers. Yes, mm -hmm. that is true. Mm -hmm. um, what do Mormons believe? So they believe that um, 
Joseph Smith wrote another book, the Book of Mormon, and then Doctrines and Covenants and the Pearl of Wisdom, I think is what the three are, the Price of Wisdom. Pearl of, Pearl, Pearl of Great Price. Pearl of Great Price, sorry. And so they base their religion on those three books and then the Bible also, but they don't focus on the Bible, they focus on those. And so some of the things are that you have to do good works in order to go to heaven, you will never be assured of your salvation. And so there's a whole lot of other things. If you go to gotquestions.org, they have a really excellent article on that. Just type in Mormon and it will tell you that um, in it. Um, I understand your judgment of movies, but isn't it a fact that so many are now reading their Bibles? Okay, so yes, that's good that people are reading their Bibles. The problem is when you see something like The Chosen and it shows things that you think are in the Bible but are not, when you go read the Bible, you're not going to know what's fact and what's fiction. Because I know the Bible says your heart is deceitful. When I watch The Chosen and he says to Nicodemus, what does your heart tell you? Or to follow your heart. Or to follow your heart or whatever it is. I know that's a lie and that's not in the Bible. So, I mean, yeah, I guess it's, it's good that it's bringing people to read the Bible. but I also think it's deceiving people in thinking things that are in the Bible that aren't in there. So, you know, um, just because, okay, just because people are reading their Bible or even going to church, doesn't mean they're Christians. That doesn't mean you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. We keep saying the only way is accepting Jesus. And there's a lot of people that read their Bibles and have never accepted Jesus. Mm -hmm. that have gone to church, they've ushered, they taught Sunday school, um, they've been an elder in the church, and they don't believe in Jesus. And so they're not going to heaven. Jesus said, I'm the only way, the truth and the life. He's, he's the only way. And from their own mouths, these people say, well, I don't believe in him, but I am going to church anyway, just because that's what you're supposed to do. And stuff, crazy stuff like this. So you see, you've got to be very, very careful with all of these things. If Jesus isn't the whole thing and you don't understand exactly what the Bible says about that, you'll, you'll come with it with a strange view is what I'm trying to say, kind of a twisted You'll look at it a little bit differently. I don't even know how to explain it. It's more of a, I think you just sense it more or something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think there's one confusion because it's hard for more people because they read the same Bible with different understanding. But, oh. But the thing I was thinking is, is that the big difference is one of them is that God, that Jesus is one. He's not a separate God, and he's been here since the very beginning. He's never been an exalted man. Oh, the Mormons say that he's an exalted man. The Doctors and Covenants. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, the the Mormons don't believe that Jesus is God. And well, they also they believe do that. They say that, but not in the same way that we do. Yeah. He's like the one and only God that's always been here and was never a man, has never been exalted, and is, was never a physical person until he was born as Jesus. Yeah. So and he's one with the Father as the Trinity, but not as just the Godhead of three separate gods. Yeah, basically they don't believe that he's the same God that we believe because we believe that God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are three in one. They also believe that when you die, you become a God. And God specifically says there is no other God. So the, both of those two things together, you know, are part of it. Um somebody asked shoot where to go um where does it say it's forbidden to pray for the for the dead in the bible um hebrews 9 27 and just as it is appointed for man to die once and after that comes judgment you die once and then you're judged you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell um 
then um but you could turn that question around too where does it say in the bible that you can pray for them yeah. you know there is no place that it says to pray for the dead yeah um and then when the thief died on the cross jesus said truly i say to you today you will be in paradise there's no praying there's no purgatory there's no in between you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell but you have to make that decision before you die. And one thief on the cross decided to go to heaven and one thief decided to go to hell. But they made that decision for themselves before they died in seconds before, you know, maybe minutes before they died. So, and even things like, uh, we're not supposed to have anything to do with mediums and mm -hmm. things like that. And they deal with praying, uh, bringing the dead, you know, mm -hmm. and speaking to the dead. And the Bible says, do not have anything to do with that. And so it kind of can go along with that same yeah. type of thing, yeah. you know. And, you know, praying to saints, praying to Mary, we are not to pray to the dead, period. Yeah. And it is praying to the dead. Asking, I, I get this all the time. Well, we're just asking for them to intercess like a friend would ask. No, you are not to pray to the dead, period. That includes Mary, that includes the saints. There's no ifs, ands, or buts around it. It's very specific. Do not mess with the dead. And that's and it says about mediums and yeah. all that stuff, you know, that it's it's really kind of dangerous yeah. even to do that. Um, okay, what is your opinion of people that are mentally ill and could commit suicide? That is something that happens. It doesn't mean that you're not a Christian. If you're a Christian and you're mentally ill and you commit suicide, you're not going to go to hell for that. No, you'll still go to hell. You cannot lose your salvation. Yeah. Once you accept Jesus, yeah. there's nothing you can do to lose that salvation. Yeah. That's why we can feel so secure and have such peace. Yeah. That's why we're not worried about whatever's happening in the world mm -hmm. because we're so secure. We have that security in our heart. Mm -hmm. And once you have Jesus, in your heart and you've accepted not in your head in your heart then you don't lose that it'll never mm -hmm. go away the same way tara i don't care what she does she could commit suicide she could do anything oh, she's please, still God. my daughter no matter what and we are still god you know jesus once we accept him in his heart that's not where it's his we're mm -hmm. his yeah um okay mom and i are getting tired so <laughs> Uh, the new apostolic reformation, do not go near that. That is satanic. So just stay away from that. Um, and I've been criticized before for not allowing other religious views on my channel. That's because I am accountable when I get to heaven and I have to stand before Jesus And I'm not going to say, oh, I didn't want to offend them. So I let them print untruths and falsehoods on my channel. I'm not going to do it. And I'm not going to apologize. I am not being mean. I'm not being nasty. I'm not being judgmental. I am telling you what the Bible says. And the Bible says that I am going to stand before Jesus and be accountable for what I did for him. And even though I'm not held accountable for my sins, I am accountable for how I spread the gospel. And I'm not going to let false doctrines on my channel if we can catch it. And we're not here to argue. No. That's what the, those things coming on is just to start stir up arguments. We have studied all these things. They say, well, you don't want to hear our side. No, we've studied all of these things. All three of us between us know a lot of this stuff. And so we're not here to argue. We're here to answer questions, but not to argue what faith is right, what faith is wrong, you know, just to answer people's questions. And another thing, people, when you come on here, it's like me going to my neighbor's house and I walk in there and I'm saying, ooh, I don't like the way you decorate it. Now you need to get updated here and this is what you need to find out. You need to study this and find out these colors are awful and you need to do something different and decorate. I wouldn't do that to my neighbor. 
she can decorate her house the way she wants. She can do whatever she wants in her house. It's not for me to go over there and tell her how to fix her house. And a lot of people come on here and they're not being necessarily mean or tacky about it, but they want to tell us how to do our, our stuff on our channel. It's our channel and we're inviting you in. So don't come in and tell us all of our decorating's all wrong. Or, you know what I mean? That's basically what you're doing. We're inviting you into our home and to be rude and, you know, want to argue with us about stuff. That's not what we're here for. We're here to answer questions for a lot of people ask us questions about these things. We're here to answer about the debt, about the Bible, about any number of things. But so, you know, um, and if you are questioning what we're saying go to the bible and read it yourself and read it yourself do you research yeah. if you don't understand why, something, why argue with us yeah. about it you know uh, gotquestions.org is a very good place to answer your questions if you have them i personally in the last two or three months have done more research on catholicism and mormonism and jehovah's witnesses <laughs> than I ever wanted to do. But you know what? It has made me even stronger in my faith mm -hmm. because I see where the deception and the lies in those religions lie. And I know that I can say, yes, this is what the Bible says about it. The Bible is very specific that you don't pray to the dead. The Bible is very specific that you can't pray for someone who has died. The Bible is very specific that you cannot work your way into heaven period what's interesting too is a lot of these people they um they won't they don't want to read our stuff you know yeah and things like but they want us to read theirs and we do read, mm -hmm. read yeah. we know this stuff you yeah. know so it makes me wonder are they not secure enough in their faith that they want to do mm -hmm. that that they're yeah. afraid to do that yeah. so you got uh, Sasha says, would a nativity scene be, con be considered an idol? <laughs> well, actually, we, I, Tara and I were just talking, talking about, about that, that this morning. Yeah, I we think it actually it. might be, and I have never... We've never been... Seen it in that light, but I will honestly say I'm that now to wonder I about think it. it might be. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think it will be. And, you know... Although the only difference, one thing I could see a little difference is, I don't pray to a nativity scene, you know? I'm yeah. not worshiping a nativity scene. So I, when I think of an idol, I think of more praying to it and worshiping but it. But it's still, and, you worship Jesus. So, so it's, um, I don't know. It's a representation it's, it's, see, of that. This so is something we're willing to so, say we're not sure about. Yeah. We don't know. So just pray and ask, you know. And this may be one of the things, this could be one of those things that you're convicted about. Yeah. Do you wear a head covering? Do you not wear a head covering? It. This may be just the conviction yeah. of your own heart type mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. I hate to go because uh, I don't want to leave anybody unanswered who has, you know, um, but I really got pee. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's see. You want me to answer a question while you run and leave. <laughs> uh, let's see. People in the uh, people have lost their ability to sit and listen and understand, and someone share their perspective. That's true. People just don't want to yeah. talk anymore, and they get mad and they and they want. But they want yell, things to tickle but, their ears. Yeah, they want things that make them feel comfortable. That yeah feels ooey gooey, emotionally good feeling. And yeah, that's not the Bible, <laughs> really, in one sense, mm -hmm. you know. And here's the thing: I think that there are some genuine. I think there are some Catholics who are genuinely saved Christians. I do too. They just Every don't, denomination has, yeah. Yeah, they just don't understand the Bible. Yeah. And they don't understand these traditions that their church te te teaches, and they don't understand that tradition is not equal to the Bible. But I think that there are some people who, who are genuinely Christians and given their life to Jesus they mm -hmm. just don't understand that's wrong. The same thing with some Mormons. I do believe there are some Mormons who have given their life to Christ and don't understand that what their the church tre teaches is not biblical. The same with Jehovah's Witnesses. The same with some Baptists. Yeah, there's the traditions of men in every denomination. It's, that's not what it is. It's Jesus. Yeah. 
but people start worshiping their traditions and their yeah. doctrines, you know, and mm -hmm. they've got them kind of goofy. And yeah. so, um, let's see. Okay. I, the comments have gone so fast. I can't even keep up now. I'm really sorry guys. If, if I missed something, what do I think of pastor Greg Locke? I would not watch him. Yeah. I, I think several years ago he may have been a good pastor, but I would not watch him now, uh, from the things that I know about his life personally, um, and things like that. What are your feelings on the cross represented in jewelry, et cetera, of other Christian symbols? So I don't know. Actually, well, but, I mean, that's not an image of Jesus. I don't know. I mean, I don't think I did. I did. That, see, but, I had a Baptist preacher one time say that he didn't believe women should wear crosses well, and stuff. You know, well, maybe it, not. I think some of those things like that are like i said you know just a fine line do do should women wear a head covering mm -hmm. and uh the, there's a there's a scripture i don't know where it's at in the bible that says if you feel convicted about something and do it then that's probably sin to you but but some some of these things you know if you're not convicted about god knows that they don't bother you or they won't affect you and so he doesn't maybe convict you about i don't know that's another whole thing that we can talk about but um okay so um okay yeah kimberly says i was saved um let's see i was saved before i converted i do not follow the church's teaching i consider myself a catholic christian i do not pray to the saints and do not pray to mary i do not say the rosary yeah yeah i mean i i have so, had lots of yeah so, friends I mean, that are catholic that are christians yeah. i know you know uh what are your feelings oh wait no that wasn't it there was one more here i was going to get because um what do you mean you can't get your you can't work yourself into heaven so the bible says that jesus that we are all sinners we have to admit we're sinners we have to believe that Jesus died on the cross. He rose again. And that the only way we get to heaven is to confess our sins and accept him as our Lord and Savior. Period. But there are some Bible verses that say that faith with works. What does that mean? That means that you've given your, you have faith in Jesus, but then you keep working and working and working for him because you love him, not to work and work and work to get into heaven. And Catholicism, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witness to some point, those are the main religions that teach in Muslims that, that teach you what you do is going to get you into heaven. It is not what you do that gets you into heaven. It is the fact that you have asked Christ to forgive you of your sins and you've given your life to Christ. That's it. And, um, I mean, I don't know. They how try to earn to their way to you heaven. Can't earn your way. Yeah. Every religion, except you know what we believe, says you have to earn your way to heaven. You have to do yeah. something in order to be accepted by God and to yeah. get to heaven. And Jesus didn't say that. Mm -hmm. He said, "Just you just believe in Him," and mm -hmm. that's what the whole Bible talks about. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. First of all, if you guys need a Bible. Go to livingonadime.com. We give them away free. If you can't afford it, just use the coupon code free Bible. Livingonadime.com. Go to the shop and we will give you one. Um, uh, okay. My husband and myself were both raised Catholic. We became Christian in 2008. My mother in law can't understand why we don't have statues and crosses all around our house. We explain many times. Just keep explaining and keep praying for her. That's. Mm -hmm. what you're called to do. Mm -hmm. We do not save anyone. Only Jesus can save them. So, um, okay, let's. And it is hard see. when you have family members that don't, you know, yeah. believe. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. That looks, let me just see real quick here. Um, is Christian music. Okay. Some of it is, and some of it isn't. You'll have to use discernment. Yeah, on it. you'll have to use discernment, disturb discernment, and uh, know your Bible. Uh, what do you? They want to know Mike's perspective. So Mike was raised Catholic. For those of you who don't know, Mike was Catholic for the first twenty-three years of his life, and then he became a Christian, and then he met me, and he really had to practice his faith 
<laughs> um, but that's why I know so much about Catholicism because Mike grew up in it. He knows it very, very well. And he will tell you that he believes Catholicism is a cult. So I'm just, I will someday, maybe if he, 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 if he wants to talk about that, I will let him talk about that. Um, but just so you know, that's part of the reason why when you guys say, I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> I do know what I'm talking about. And on top of just what Mike has done, I have been doing a lot of research that's really Mike hasn't been happy with because he's like, well, you stop us not. I'm like, no, we, I need to know this. And it bothers Mike because he knows how wrong it is or was for him. And he doesn't want any part of it because of that. And, but when I was doing my research, it was really helpful because he had his perspective and he's like, yeah, this is what they think. And so, um, Anyway, for those of you who think we don't know what we're talking about, we we know way more than we wish we knew, but we do. What frightens <laughs> me a lot is there's a scripture that says, and I think Tara read it earlier, that says there's going to be a lot of people that get to heaven and Jesus is going to say, no, I never I knew, knew you. you. Yeah. That they said, I did this for you. That, you know, all so many people have been practicing their religion for so many years and they think that's what they were supposed mm -hmm. to be. they had been deceived. Mm -hmm. Satan deceives us so easily and you have to be very, very careful. And so that's why we just stick to the words of the Bible, because if you get off that or people that teach just the Bible, uh, something's different from what the Bible says. You've got to be very careful. Mm -hmm. And that breaks my heart to think of all these people that really really wanted, you know, to have a faith, but were just practicing had never, nobody had ever told them. Nobody had ever told them, you know? Yeah. And here's the thing. Uh, I can't find it on here. Uh, somebody says, some of us feel hurt and condemned that, uh, some of us feel hurt that you're, that our faiths are condemned. I, we aren't condemning you. No. If you're feeling condemned, then that's, that's from coming from the your, Holy from, Spirit yeah. condemning you. That is not, not coming from, from us. us. We're telling you what the Bible says. We've told you. We believe a lot of different denominations have saved people. Yeah. It's not the denomination. you got to get that out. And if you can't get that out, then you know something's not right. Yeah. Um, and so I would pray. Read your really Bible. Pray. Yeah. Ask God to show you. maybe you're being convicted. But, you know, I, I truly... I have, I have nowhere to judge. I am a sinner just as much as you are. We are all sinners. The only person who is sinless is Jesus. Mary was not sinless. Joseph was not sinless. None of the disciples were sinless. Every single person sins except Jesus. And so it's not my place to condemn you. I don't condemn you at all. Mm -mm. I'm just telling you what the Bible, to tell you what the Bible, what the Bible says. says. Yeah. And, and, and some people have said, I have a degree from a college and that's totally meaningless. You need a degree from the Bible. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Like I said, you need from the college. As a matter of fact, or, that's or almost say, or, scarier in some ways. Yeah. Some people say I have a degree from, I have a degree from a college in divinity or I have a catechism or whatever. Those things are totally meaningless. All that matters is God and his word, the Bible. Mm -hmm. Everything else, it, I mean. And that goes to show, if I you're can saying, have I have this degree, that's what's going to save you. Yeah. That shows you you're not you're not on target. Yeah, it's it's not a degree. It's you and God and then his word and what he told us in his mm -hmm. word. Yeah. So. If, uh, because if you if you truly believed in Jesus, you wouldn't say, I have a degree. You would say, I have Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, and no. the thing is, if you say, I have to, you, if you say, you need to talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about in order to understand the Bible, then you're wrong because God gave us the Bible so that we don't need to go ask somebody exactly. else. We can read the Bible. That's why we give them away. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Let's see one more. Honestly, I think what counts is the kind of person you are. Your actions match your word. You treat everyone how you want to be treated, no matter who they are and help others. Let's, I mean, if you're a Christian, you're going to do that out of your love for Christ, but that's not going to get you to heaven. 
Yeah. So I don't know being, how that's being, being good, phrased, but yeah, being good is not going to get you to heaven. Yeah, um, because you still sin. See, yeah. that's it. You still have sin yeah. in your life in different ways, and you have to. Um, somebody had to pay for those sins, and Jesus did that. And so you can be as good as you can be, but you still have sinful actions and mm -hmm. thoughts and things. Yeah. Um, so do we only believe in the New Testament? No. No. We the, the old, old and the new test. The Old Testament explains what's going to happen in the New Testament, and the New Testament fulfills what happened. That's what I said or earlier. We Jesus was always Testament. quoting yeah. the Old Testament. It's all one. It's just one. It's the Bible. It's yeah, all one. There's yeah. no separation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Everyone should sit down and pray to the Lord first, and then read the Bible. He will help you understand. He will help you. Yes. yes. Exactly. Yes. Tony P. I'm questioning a lot about the Roman Catholic religion right now. Listen. Don't take my word for it. Read the Bible for yourself. There are several websites, gotquestions.org. I keep pushing them because they give you the Bible verses. Go there and you will see the Bible verses that we are talking about. And whatever subject, just type in the search, whatever subject you're questioning. And it's very easy to understand. And they have all the Bible verses listed out there for you to read. And then you can... Ask God to reveal the say, truth pray to you. That God will yeah. show you, and He He's not going to withhold hold that. If you're asking Him to show you, He's longing for you to ask Him to show you. You know, show yeah. you. Yeah. So just ask Him, and He'll and then go check these things mm -hmm. out, and you'll see. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, Turning Point Church on YouTube is a good example of a Bible-believing church. Yes, we have. Mike put in the link real quick. We have a list of Christian resources that um, – are my eyes turning yellow? <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a list of Christian resources that Mike's going to put in the link for you for pastors that um, we have online that you can go. Jack Hibbs is really, really good. solid. Jack David Hibbs. Jeremiah, Charles Stanley, all of them are very Bible-based preachers that we really, really, um, like, and, um, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, do you believe in confessing your heart out loud to someone? Um, yes, but it's not necessary. You, you are to confess your sins to God, even after you're a Christian. When you're convicted of a sin, you're to repent and try and turn away and ask for his help to help you to turn away from that sin. But you do not have to. No, not like, not like do confessing it. to a priest. You can do yeah. it to another Christian just to so they can uplift you and encourage you. Right. Yeah. The Bible specifically yeah. says to confess your sins. Yeah, to one to another. Yeah, yeah, one to another. It says that you're to do that for accountability. But as far as getting into heaven, it's not going to keep you from no. getting into heaven, I guess. And, and you can um, confess to God, too, you know. Uh, okay, let's see. Brooklyn. Okay, Brooklyn, really quickly, re-put your question in there because I really got to pee. Um, <laughs> really put your question in there. She says, I had a question earlier about three sixes being Satan. Is this true? I am concerned it comes up in some ways. So, I'm not, so I, if I don't answer this right, put your question in there. Yes, the Bible says that, um, okay, just a minute. I'm going to get the verse. Um, in the book of Revelation, it says, six, six trying, the mark of the it's beast. the mark of the beast. It's I was called just the trying, mark of the beast. I was trying to get the exact verse. Okay, Revelation 13, 15 through 8 are the verses that you need. Revelation 15, 13. No, Revelation 13, verses 15 through 18 are the verses that you want to look up. And um, it is, one second here, um, see if it'll come up. Oh, figures. Hold on just a second. Well, well, In the looking. name of well, Jesus. Well, Tara's looking. Well, Tara's okay. looking. Well, Let me also share. There's uh, a dispute about the NIV version in there. NIV is a good for it's a good translation. And um, there are a lot of people out online talking basically like conspiracy theorists about the NIV being wrong. The thing with NIV is there are certain for, there are certain things in the Bible that are not in the original most of the original 
uh, well, the earliest manuscripts, uh, copies of the Bible. And so those things are thought to have not been in the Bible in the first place. And some of those NIV just doesn't put them in there. But in other parts of the Bible, those same um, mean, the same points are made in other parts of the Bible. So it still doesn't change the meaning of the Bible. But some people think because it's out of there, it does change the meaning of the Bible. But if you look and see, those same points are made elsewhere. Uh, one, we, we do like NLT better because in those places, it, it kind of marks that this wasn't in the earliest translation, so it's disputed. Like, for instance, the as much as I absolutely love the uh, John 8, the woman caught in adultery, uh, many of the early manuscripts don't have that at all. <laughs> and so it's important to understand that may or may not have been part of the original, but nevertheless, the, the same thought is shared in other Bible um, stories. So, so the NIV is a fine translation. Yeah. Yeah. And so is New Living NLT. Okay. The Mark of the Beast is 666. It comes from Revelation. It's talking about the Antichrist, the person who is going to take over the world after the church is uh, raptured and left. And then it's the tribulation, the seven year tribulation. The second beast, uh, Revelation 13, 15 through 18. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their hands and on their foreheads, or on their foreheads. So they could not buy or sell when they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. But this calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666. So what's going to happen in the tribulation is you are not going to be able to buy or sell anything unless you have this mark on your hand or on your forehead. And the technology is already here now for that. But when, uh, hold on just a second. I just lost my train of thought. So you are not going to be able to buy or sell anything if you don't have that mark. But it does not mean that if you see the number 666 come up on your grocery receipt, or the number 666 is your house, <laughs> that that is satanic. If 666 just by itself is not a satanic number, it, well, okay, it is because it's biblical that it's 666. But if something comes up like that, if it's not being used in a satanic way, it doesn't mean that it's a satanic number. Now, if it's being used in satanic worship, and people are putting that number on things as a form of worship mm -hmm. or to or show that symbol. they are Satanists yeah. as a symbol, then it's satanic. But let's say it just comes up on your grocery receipt. I don't think if it's ten dollars and six or sixteen dollars and sixty-six cents. <laughs> it's from Satan. Car tag yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't go around messing around with it, but I wouldn't um I wouldn't be afraid of it any, either because you're a Christian. If you're a Christian, Satan cannot harm you. Uh -uh. He can make your life miserable. <laughs> he can he irritate can torment the living you, day life torment you. you, irritate you, but he, he cannot he harm you. You mm -hmm. are covered under the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Seriously. And I have seen more Christian pastors and Christian YouTubers who have had technological problems this week. Just like somebody was saying, they were having problems with mm -hmm. us. That is mm -hmm. Satan not wanting to get the word out that you are a sinner. Jesus died for your sins. And if you want to go to heaven, you all you need to do is confess your sins and give your life to him. And you will spend eternity in heaven with Jesus. And he will remember your sins no more, period. That's all you have to do. It is a free it gift a free gift the bible says so simple a child can understand yeah. it we make it so complicated like we were uh, talking earlier we make everything so complicated yeah. and it's so simple yeah um and guys you know we're talking about famines we're talking about financial collapse and all these things these things are coming together 
that the book of Revelation is coming true before our eyes. All the technology for these things to be happening. So if you're not right with Jesus, you need to get right with Jesus now. Because I got news for you. The tribulation is going to be bad. I mean, it's going to be really bad. This is a walk in the park. If you, I mean, if you, you can't think even describe it. inflation is bad now, it's, the Bible says it's going to cost a day's wages to buy one loaf of bread. Or wheat to make one loaf of bread, depending on the version you read. But it's going to be really bad. There are going to be hailstones coming out of the sky, killing people, turning the water <laughs> rancid so you can't drink the water. There's going to be massive wars. There are going to be massive famines, massive bugs. This is why we are telling you all this now, because we care about you. And we don't want you to have to go through that. Christians won't. People Christians, that believe in Jesus yeah, won't. They're not going to go through that. And so God loves his people enough, and we're called his bride. God loves his bride enough to take us away from that before all of it happens, before his wrath is poured out on the earth. And you'll still have a chance to give your life to Christ during the tribulation. But It'll be why would you want to wait? Why would you want to wait to go through that? You wouldn't. Um I think the rapture's coming first. I do too. If you want to see a really good video on that, type in Matthew 24, Robert Beaker, B-E-A-K-E-R, B-E-A-K-E-R. He did a fantastic sermon on Matthew 24 and why the rapture comes before the tribulation. Um, I don't have time to go into all of that. Um, so uh, I got some stuff at the gas station and it was 666 and I grabbed a pack of gum. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> that's good though. I know, I know what you're saying though. That's why we're laughing. Um, if the church is raptured pre-trib, who will be left to preach the gospel? First Thessalonians says God will send deluding influence so that the rest will believe the lie. It is people who have heard it and did not give their lives to Christ see what's happening and they're like, oh man, I was wrong. <laughs> and they will give their life. But there's going to be witnesses. There's going to be two witnesses specifically. The Jew, the rap, the tribulation is mostly for the Jewish people, for Christ to get the Jewish people to open their eyes that he is the Messiah. That's what the tribulation is for, is to get them to open their eyes. But um, I think there's going to be a lot of things like this left after we're gone that people are going to see. They're yeah. going to find Bibles. Although you got to be careful on that because it says God's going to harden their hearts. Yeah. So you may think you can ex you wait till then, but you know, if you're not accepting it now, the chances are pretty good. You're just going to, by that time, just fluff it off and not really think about it anymore and things like that. Plus it says that they'll be beheaded. All anybody that accepts Christ, they, they'll be beheaded. You know, and mm -hmm. so you'll you'll die right away. And and I why why would you even want to wait? What 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 would be so hard? You know, why mm -hmm. not just accept Jesus now? It's mm -hmm. it can't hurt you. That's what people don't, why people reject it so much. I don't totally understand because there's nothing that can hurt you. It only helps mm -hmm. you. Yeah, it only does you good. So okay, uh, Bible verse. You want to go? Yeah, I can Bible verse on um, why Satan cannot harm us. First John five eighteen. It is we know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning, for God holds them securely, and evil one cannot touch them. There you go. He can make our lives miserable, but he <laughs> is. He has to ask permission from God to harm us like in Job. So, and God only allows it if it's going to help us or glorify him. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, I think I don't want to be here when the great tribulation happens. No, and I'm not mm -mm. going to be. Mm -mm. That's how I know that I am um, right with God. Uh, so anyway, so if you need a Bible, livingonadime.com. Go to the shop. If you can't afford one, put in the code free Bible. We will send you a free Bible. If thank you, Diane, for that Bible money. We oh, appreciate thank it. Thank you, Diane. And please know that 100% of Bible donations, we turn around and 
purchase Bibles to send right back out to everybody. And we are getting testimonials right oh, and left I wish you guys from could people hear them all. It's whose amazing. lives are just being totally changed. Totally changed. Mm -hmm. And so we do this as a ministry. So when you get to heaven, you're going to run into people that said, because you helped mm -hmm. with the Bible, I'm up here with you. So it'll yeah. be so exciting. Yeah. So go to livingonadime.com, get the Bible, go to, or I mean, go to our shop. shop. You can get the coupon code free Bible. It's right there. And we turn around and said to you, we just got a fresh pallet. The semi came yesterday. Got a fresh pallet of Bibles. <laughs> Please visit us at livingonadime.com and I'm going to the bathroom. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.